Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live broadcasting worldwide. It is the 12th day of December 2014 on this Friday edition. I'm your host, Alex Jones. I want to thank David Knight and the rest of the crew sitting in yesterday. I, uh, again, have had family issues here and there that I've been taking care of uh, that are all uh, now coming into line quite nicely, thanks to the good Lord above. And so that's why I've been missing a few days here and there. Uh, but uh, we'll make it up to everybody. We are live, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll be live this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time here at InfoWars. Where to start? Look at the front page of DrudgeReport.com. GOPers accuse leadership of breaking promises to kill the big spending bill. Why even the first lady's lunch program is funded. And the constituency is so incredibly upset. Even Sean Hannity, who normally defends the system, has come out and dubbed Boner, Boehner. I was calling him um, Joe Biden Boehner last week. Well, now Hannity's calling him John Gruber Boehner or John Gruber's Boner. I don't mean that as a pun, really, folks. You're supposed to pronounce that German name, Boner. What's, be proud of your family name. But he even had a campaign when he first ran for Congress saying it's Boehner, not Boner. We had to find that old TV ad from 20-something years ago. Uh, but uh, Sean Hannity has slammed John Gruber's Boner. Uh, he shouldn't be the speaker. John Boner Gruber, conservatives tonight. That's right. He did Gruber conservatives tonight. Or the American people, most Democrats don't like Obamacare now in Gallup polls. It's a giant stinking fraud, a bipartisan criminal operation. You just had a major political realignment, the biggest Republican sweep in over 100 years. What's going to happen if they don't perform and repeal it, which Mitch McConnell and John Gruber Boner, John Gruber Boehner, Boner, sounds like a song or something, John Boehner, or no, John Gruber Boner Boehner. His name is my name, too. <laughs> because all of them are going to be seen as a bunch of uh, Gruberites that we're stupid. By the way, we are stupid if we don't dismantle this whole criminal system. We really do deserve whatever we get if we don't roll up our sleeves and at the county, city, federal international level, reverse the out-of-control, joke-level, racing corruption that is taking place. Uh, Boehner and Obama deals have increased debt $3.8 trillion just since Boehner was Speaker of the House with Obama uh, in the last four years. So that's the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen. Merry Christmas, government goodies for all, even Pork for piggies. We're going to break down those articles coming up. Some of the stories up on Infowars.com. House passes government funding bill with bankster derivative bailout provision bigger than the banker bailout of 2008. By the way, Kurt Nemo's headline is excellent and it's very accurate. He does a great job focusing on that, but it's not even bad enough. The headline's not even horrible enough. It should be House passes banker bailout derivatives bill bigger than 08 because it is bigger. It's unlimited, unlimited power to bankrupt the country, to quote Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> We're like trying to save the country. And the globalists, the Federal Reserve say, no, 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 you will die. You will sign on to everything. <laughs> everything is proceeding as David Rockefeller has foreseen it. Ah, it's Friday. I'm wound up. We got Billy Corgan and the Smashing Pumpkins coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live broadcasting worldwide. It's Friday, December 12th, 2014. Strap yourselves in. 
As a community moves towards despotism, respect is restricted to fewer people. That's veteran Denver police officer Charles Jones IV smashing an unarmed suspect in the face six times. Officers accused of using excessive force on a suspect and then trying to erase the evidence. Of I'm, I'm observing what they're doing and they're arresting me. I don't understand what's going on. A community rates low on an information scale when the press, radio, and other channels of communication are controlled by only a few people. Does it raise ethical questions about the use of government money to produce stories about the government that wind up being aired with no disclosure that they were produced by the government? How can you ask such a question? What difference at this point does it make? When a competent observer looks for signs of despotism in the community, he looks beyond fine words and noble phrases. There are actions I have the legal authority to take as president that will help make our immigration system more fair and more just. Tonight, I'm announcing those actions. What I say goes, see? I'm the law around here. <laughs> he came, he saw, he died. <laughs> yes, in modern warfare, our military leaders are finding that words and ideas are highly effective weapons. We just have to be repetitive about this. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. We are trained to deceive if we have to. You really don't have to trust me. You shouldn't trust me. In fact, by my actually participating in that, I will taint the news. In communities of this kind, despotism stands a good chance. The nine most terrifying words in the English language are I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Okay, Miss Hughes, well, we're, we're going to do everything we can to help you. <laughs> Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there is a war on for your mind. We need to get that video, not just on PrisonPlanet.tv, but up on Infowars.com right now. Rob Jacobson produced that little two-minute jewel of uh, awakening and truth, Veritas, so he can name it whatever he wants. Let's make it top video, Infowars.com YouTube channel. The one with 450 million views, the big channel. Put it on the top of the Alex Jones channel right now, please. And let's get it up to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Wow, where do I begin today? I mean, it is over the top. There is so much good news. There is so much bad news. There is so much crazy news. We have Billy Corrigan, of course, of Smashing Pumpkins, 40 million albums sold, Patriot, Anti-New World Order. So he's demonized by CIA operatives like Anderson Cooper on a routine basis. Um, I was going to be here yesterday. He was going to be on via video Skype, but I had a family issue come up, so David Knight filled in. Uh, his plane is landing out in Vegas at about noon our time, so he's supposedly going to be on about one. If there's any flight delays or anything, I'll end up being on Sunday or sometime next week. But my good friend Billy Corrigan scheduled to talk about a whole bunch of key issues and his new hit album and a new tour that's starting coming up in the third hour. Um, Professor Daryl Hamamoto, uh, who, of course, has exposed the Democrats' admitted plan out at UC Davis, headed up by a Big Sis. Uh, to create racial division in America and use Latinos as a new under-slave class, basically. So he's going to be joining us to talk about all the recent race baiting and the rest of it that's been uh, unfolding as well. That's what we have lined up on this live Friday worldwide edition. That said, uh, wow, there is so much to get to. First off, some really positive news. This is a bellwether right here. Fox News has been basically defending John Boehner and Mitch McConnell every time I tune into it. And I monitor it here. We have it on in the coffee room. We have it on in the studio. We have CNN on in the coffee room. MSNBC's back in the newsroom. And then we monitor Drudge and a bunch of other alternative media, new media, real media. But wide spectrum media is really the unfiltered media, wide open media, wild, wild west media, whatever you want to call it. We've got TV screens up everywhere just monitoring things. Uh, but I am not just seeing Sean Hannity. We have a clip of this. We'll play in a moment. I'm seeing basically most of the Fox News crew turning on the Republican blue blood establishment because they know which way the wind blows after propping it up for a decade plus 
and saying, you need to be removed from office, you need to be removed from the speakership if you don't repeal Obamacare whole hog. And if you don't block Obama on executive action on open borders, because there will not be a country anymore, the presidency will be a dictatorship. And I said this three weeks ago, when Krauthammer, not once but twice, said Obama's becoming a dictator, he's got to be impeached. Krauthammer is really smart and is a conservative intellectual. He doesn't just throw out buzzwords all day like a Hannity does. I don't agree with some of the stuff Krauthammer pushes sometimes, but he's light years better than a Sean Hannity uh, or you know these, these mainline rhino Republican talk show hosts that just support the police state, the drug war, the giant prisons, no matter what. Police brutality, no matter what. We try to look at both sides and actually be fair. Not just party line, you know, big government's good as long as it's conservative run. No, it's not. We're constitutional republic, not a Republican Republican. Again, the term Republicans come from people that supported the Republic. So a lot of Republicans like my show because they actually do support the Republic. But there's not much Republican in the big R Republican Party anymore. Because they're really the little R, not the big real R that is this country. That's a tongue twister, but it's prima facie evidence of reality. Now, if you pull back from all this and you look at Sean Hannity... And all these others coming out and saying he shouldn't be the speaker, close quote. This is a real telegraph message to the establishment, Rockefeller-style Republicans that basically are the same as the Democratic Party. They just give better lip service to pacify the libertarian, constitutional, conservative base that is really the majority in this country. If you want to take the country over, you've got to have loyal opposition that always drops the ball, always goes along with it, always discredits uh, any real opposition. But now you have a political realignment, depending on which historian you listen to. This could be the biggest sweep against the Democrats since the 1820s or respectively the 1920s. You notice it goes in cycles. Cycles are well documented. Well, here we are coming up, and because things are accelerated, it isn't the 20s this time, it's 2014. Because things are accelerating in cycles now. It's a few years early. And you're going to start seeing what would happen in 100 years happen in 10 years. And what would happen in 10 years happen in one year. And what happened in one year happened in a month, and then a day, and then an hour. And boy... The world is going to be wild, wild west then. And there's nothing centralized systems can do to stop it. In fact, everything they're doing is exacerbating the chaos once all this stuff comes into fruition because they're trying to use chaos to manage humanity when all they're actually doing is not creating a group collective discussion about where humanity wants to go by trying to keep people in the dark. They're ensuring the general population isn't ready to deal with the singularity and the major changes that are coming. And what's been shown in every sociological research long-term study out there is elites cannot isolate themselves no matter how much they try from what's going on in the general population. Culturally, spiritually, economically, you cannot cut off what's going on in the mass and expect to be insulated from that. But this establishment has decided it can be insulated and believes that technology deployed will be able to suppress the population of the world when instead it's going to have the opposite effect but also cause major level collapses within the system. Historical research and evidence shows that potentially could destroy life on this planet. So that's where we're going with that information today. Uh, also, we've got another report up on Infowars.com. The media is focusing on the wrong Senate torture report. We're going to talk about that. DrudgeReport.com is linked to Paul Watson's article. I've been trying to get a hold of Watson all morning. He's missing in action. He's over in London. I'm sure he's doing something important, but I'd like to get him to pop in and talk about his report. He's having dinner with his folks. They're visiting. Okay. Well, that's all right. He's allowed to do that, I guess. It is Christmas time. Congress, I'm kind of like Scrooge with Watson. Cratchit, stay in the office. 
Congress passes bill which grants unlimited access to communications of every American. And by the way, that's not his quote. That's from Congressman Justin Amash and others. We're going to look at the Intelligence Authorization Act of fiscal year 2015 that has now passed the House. So they're just legalizing beyond East Germany, beyond 1984, beyond Cuba, beyond North Korea, beyond anything anyone's ever imagined. Their answer is to certify it. See, that's the bad Republican Party right there. Not the one that Ron Paul or Rand Paul or Justin Amash or even Ted Cruz has criticized it or part of. The one that wants to live in a free country. But the mainline Republicans that, that, that the grassroots are sick of that want to convert this country into an abject police state. Which this whole thing's being pointed at Congress and at businesses and at you to give select intel to people like Obama so they can persecute the Tea Party, pro-lifers, gun owners, you name it. I mean, imagine if Hitler would have had all this stuff, or, or Stalin. They would only dream of it. It's beyond science fiction in, during their time. And now we're saying, well, it's to stop Al-Qaeda and ISIS, who our own government has been caught red-handed, our military exposed it, arming these horrible people. And then our military has to go fight them and get killed. Oh, it's a real war. But see, the, then the big weapons contractors owned by the big banks, they make money. And they take, take our liberties. Jack Spratt could eat no fat. And his wife could eat no lean. Between the two, they lick the platter clean. That's full-spectrum dominance. And if people don't understand how the world really works, we're going to lose everything. The Sean Hannity clip and more. Straight ahead. Human Events has the headline, Cromnibus. Crom. A winter festival of unrestrained spending. I like it. Simply amazing. They passed the big spending bill. They are ramming through a bunch of other legislation right now. I laugh. But only because it makes me fear for the future of this country so badly as the establishment attempts to fully bankrupt us and complete our journey into financial serfdom to these frauds. And on top of that, the Congress has passed the bill in the House that puts the American people on the hook for all of the derivatives in the future bigger than the banker bailout of 2008. House passes government funding bill with bankster derivatives bailout provision. Preparation for the next bankster bailout. This time they'll already have the law in place. And they think the bill will pass the Senate. So you have a major political realignment. The country totally upset. Democrats waking up to the Democrats being scamsters. And that Obamacare is a fraud. And the Republican leadership won't repeal it. Won't stop Obama on executive amnesty. And just pass this biggest spending bill ever. And even the First Lady's lunch program was funded. Of course. That's all UNESCO. That's all UN treaties that we haven't even signed on to, but that our government says we're under. GOP rep, House leaders made false promises to get my crucial vote. Representative Marlon Stutzman, if I pronounced that right, of Indiana accused House Republican leadership of reneging on a deal made with him to get his support on the crucial procedural vote that almost killed the $1.1 trillion Cromnibus funding bill. Cromnibus, who comes up with this stuff? They put Krampus and Omnibus together. Krampus, Krampus and Omnibus, yeah. This is out of control. Let's go to Sean Hannity talking about Joe Boehner, who needs to step down as the speaker. And again... When you have first Krauthammer saying that, and well, saying Obama needed to be impeached and things, I knew that would force the rest of them to start telling the truth because the constituents, the viewers, the sponsors, everyone is hopping mad. And folks, keep the pressure going. We're not going to sit around for six months, a year, two years before we wake up that this round uh, of, of, of people screwing us over or that Republican leaders are riding herd over the new folks that have come in, the junior House and Senate members. We're going to put their feet to the fire day one, and we are, and this is good news. It's bad news that meet the new boss same as the old boss, as the who says. 
But it's good news. People aren't getting fooled. They are hopping mad. Let's go to Sean Hannity. John Gruber Boehner, two days after the midterm election, talking tough on the issue of amnesty, but unfortunately, that's all it was, because today, it's conservatives who feel like they've been burned as the Speaker aligned himself with the President, with Harry Reid, Steny Hoyer, and Joe Biden to pass a spending bill just a short time ago. Here with reaction, National Review's uh, Rich Lowry from the Tea Party News Network, Scotty Hughes. I, the, John Boehner Grubered conservatives tonight and by that I mean the conservative base in particular and Michelle Bachman hit the nail on the head he never would have done this before the election he has no inspiring vision and to me he is everything that's wrong with Washington he's a Democratic Party light he doesn't have those bold colored differences that Reagan talked about and he should in my view he should not be the speaker he should be replaced that's right let's back that up and play it again he should of course he shouldn't be he helped pass Obamacare. He's protecting it now. He wanted to pass total amnesty. He's protecting Obama now. He'll put out some red meat rhetoric occasionally to pacify people. John Boehner is worse than Obama. Because we, we've defeated Obama. A libertarian movement in the Republican Party won the House and the Senate and could reform this country. But no, no, the, the Chamber of Commerce nationally, all the big Republican money is giving money to kill the Tea Party because these big mega corporations own both parties and they want to keep looting this country till they're done with it. Well, I don't want to be looted. By the way, um, guess what they're also doing in Congress? They're not just passing banker bailout bills. We come back, I'll tell you about it. New federal law targets retirement benefit cuts. Quote, we thought our pensions were secure. Get ready. And they're going to have banker bail-ins when the next raping comes. The next raping is close. This year, next year, it's all been planned. We just don't know when they're going to pull the trigger on us. They're going to take part of your pension fund and part of your bank account bipartisanly. We're on the you know, I shouldn't be so happy, but it is gallows humor. I sit here and I look at the news and the legislation, and I got to be honest with you. It's crazier than I thought it would get 15 years ago. I mean, they're really setting up world government. They're really removing the power of Congress. They're really getting rid of our borders. They're really training kids that their parents aren't their parents. They're really putting cancer viruses in vaccines. They really are letting the, the curriculum for schools be written by the big three private prison industries to prepare the children for prison. We really have been overtaken, but the average person isn't even bad. They're just compartmentalized and unaware of how incredibly over the top all this is. Before I get to this piece uh, by Max Slavo up on prisonplanet.com and infowars.com, new federal law targets retirement benefit cuts. We thought our pensions were secure. And we're going to be breaking that down. I, I love how they say this will protect people, but then it doesn't. But let's go ahead and go to this clip here. House passes government funding bill with banks or derivatives bailout provision. Kurt Nemo has a report on that again at Infowars.com with the subsections of the bill. Here it is. What was supposed to be a rare moment of bipartisan compromise devolved into congressional chaos. Here we are in the House being blackmailed, being blackmailed to vote for an appropriations bill. A bizarre scene. Liberal Democrats calling on conservative Republicans to join them in opposing a massive $1.1 trillion spending bill to keep the government running because it eases Wall Street reforms. I'm here today to ask my Republican colleagues who don't want to see another Wall Street bailout to join in our efforts to strip this Wall Street giveaway from the bill. This is not about partisanship. This is about fairness. How do you respond to uh, lawmakers like Elizabeth Warren who say that in this bill you have a giveaway to Wall Street that will ultimately hurt consumers? Uh, I don't believe that to be the case at all. And uh, Democrats have supported this provision in the past. Uh, it was agreed to in this bill on a bipartisan, bicameral agreement.
It is true that the 1,603-page spending bill was the product of intense negotiating and horse trading between Republicans and Democrats, like Appropriations Chair Barbara Mikulski. We debated. We fought. You know, sometimes you give a little, you take a little. But it was too much giving and taking for wings of both parties. Conservatives unhappy it did not stop the president's executive action on immigration. It looks like there's nothing but a walk and retreat. Democrats upset about rolling back regulations on banks, potentially putting taxpayer dollars at risk. It's back to the same old Republican uh, formula. Privatize the gain, nationalize the risk. All right, let's stop right there. You succeed. Uh, Number one, I'm not defending the Republicans, but it was the Democrats that overturned all the banking regulations in the 90s and created that big bubble that Clinton claimed was so great. I mean, they're the ones. Larry Summers, Rubin, uh, Clinton, and the Republicans, a lot of them went along with it. Some Democrats spoke out against it, but it's bipartisan. They keep pointing fingers at each other. This is what the special interests want. Now, let me break this down. They claim they're protecting pension funds, and it's going to be private, not just public. They've done this in every other country. It's coming here now. This is what the big banks openly talk about doing. They say that pensions are untenable because the national debt's too high. Well, in a way, that's true, but then they sign us on to derivatives that are private that dwarf all the public stuff. So they use the fact that they've set up a public system that's untenable as a way to cut the public system while massively increasing what goes to the foreign banks in banker bailouts and in corporate welfare. So that's really what's happening. And of course, I've told you a thousand times, they're going to say, we got to pass this or you'll lose all the public pensions. And then it allows them to start cutting them. And then, oh, we're taking 20%. Then a few years later, another 20, but hey, we'd lose it all. And then pretty soon the formula is you end up with about 30% of what your original pension was. And it's simply done so that the investments that were made in these big banks and in these big brokerage houses and in the stock market can be swindled from you. They don't want you to have money. They created a two quadrillion global derivatives bubble in the last 30 years to, well, it's actually since about the early 90s. So time is flying. It's only 20-something yeah, years. They were doing some of it before, but it's really 20 years. In the last 20 years, they've created a two quadrillion bubble. Our national debt's 19 trillion, rounding up. So, so they, they confuse the public. You owe 19 trillion, so we signed you on to 1,000 of the global 2,000 quadrillion. And this is all in the IMF World Bank documents. We've had the former head of the World Bank on many times, head of the, the other head economist, Sticklitz. I've had the former head of policy, the Treasury on, father of economics. I mean, this is well known. You're not hearing my opinion. This is a fact, but you even read the Wall Street Journal, it doesn't have that much real meat in it. The Financial Times of London has a lot of real meat in it, but it's always from the perspective of the New World Order, but tells the truth. Yes, there's a planetary government. Yes, we're taking your rights away because you don't know any better. And yeah, we're going to reduce your population. And it is a conspiracy by private six banks. And they're obviously smart because they run things. That's what their foreign editor said four years ago. The headline was, and now for world government. And he even in another article attacked me. Because, see, I'm small-minded. Uh huh. I don't get the grand plan. No, I get the grand plan. In fact, most of the people, including the editor, the foreign editor of the Financial Times, I bet he hasn't really read Aldous Huxley and Julian Huxley and Bertrand Russell, and Francis Galton, and Charles Darwin, uh, and the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute documents, and the Cold Spring Harbor documents, and IBM and the Holocaust book, and Shearer's Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, and 300, 400 other books. I have. I know the plan, Jack, and it ain't nice. And all of you people, the plan makes Hitler look like a tame person. I mean, quite frankly, Hitler would be the special little mindless wind-up toy that they had as a beta test.
And I'm not trying to scare people just to scare you. I'm telling you what's going on. A lot of people hear me talk about this stuff and they get really upset. Because deep down they know it's true. And it's as if I am sabotaging their happy little delusional green pastures world. It doesn't go on like that forever. So new federal law targets retirement benefit cuts. We thought our pensions were secure. The $101 trillion spending bill includes some new provisions that may come as a shock. And it's all billed to save your pension, but it's really the end of it. More government regulation over private retirement accounts and even the establishment of government-sponsored annuities that would take the place of 401ks. See, it's the government taking your privatized system that was truly private in to prop up their government systems. But it's Wall Street managing it. Such reforms, close quote, would effectively end private retirement accounts in America. The government could then take these trillions of dollars and redistribute it through the new national retirement system. That's what Obamacare does. But it redistributes and lowers the quality of the care for social engineering purposes. They will take our retirement accounts. They will take our 401ks. They will say you all have been having such hard times earning money so that we're going to do this is we're going to save you. We're going to give you government bonds, which are guaranteed 30-year government bonds, and you'll get 3%, and you'll give us your retirement assets. By the way, I am quoting this out of mainstream news. This article uh, is linked to mainstream news and the congressional record. These are quotes. Amazing. And then on top of it, again, House passes government funding bill with banks to derivative as bailout provision. We're going to go to break here in a little while and come back and get into the media is focusing on the wrong side of the torture report. University bans Christmas on campus to respect diversity, but students aren't buying it. A great example of how the, the tyranny of political correctness can backfire. See, you can use their attack to make liberty stronger. We're also going to look uh, at some other breaking, really important news as well on some other subjects. But first, I wanted to play this little promo put together dealing with Rob Dew because this, this is what happened. This is what happened with CJ. It's what happened with me. It's what happened with Rob Dew. It's what happened with anybody and everybody that takes oxy powder. And it's just so revolutionary. It helps people so much. It's so affordable. And it funds this operation that is self-funded by your support with high-quality products you purchase at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com. So here's this little promo piece with Rob Dew's testimony. We're going to go to break, come back, and get into more news. Stay with us. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. In your own words, repeat to me what you said this morning and what Oxy Powder did for you. Well, I'll go into a little more detail. Um, back in uh, September, I started. Um, I decided I was going to take it, and I was. I've been hovering between two twenty and two fifteen. Couldn't get any lower than that. You're a big guy. What are you about six three? Six three. Yeah. And you know, in college, I was about one eighty five, one ninety, and I was playing basketball and doing all that stuff. So, I was, and I was really in shape. Over the years, having kids, you slow down a little bit. So I was up to 220. I think the most I got to was 230 at one point, and I started to develop, a, you know, like a double chin. I hadn't really realized it, and I looked in the mirror, I'm like, oh, my God. So I've been trying to watch what I eat, uh, taking different things, and, you know, but I was still, like, at 215. And when we started selling Oxy Powder, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. And I started off, I did five pills the first night, and nothing happened. And it says on there, you got to find your dose. So the next night, I did seven. I woke up the next morning. 
And basically, you're going to be visiting the bathrooms. What I think it does is it goes in there and like liquefies the stuff that's inside your intestines, and then it just flows out pretty much. Not to get too graphic, but I did that for six days once I found and that stuff's it. rotting in there, and that's what gives you cancer. Exactly, that, it's diverticula, and and it gets rid of it, it hurts your immune system. It does all kind of stuff. It just it keeps your digestive system from working properly. All that stuff in there. Took it that first day, and then I took it for six more days after that. And after that, I was down to 202. And now, I, now, how fast did you lose 12 pounds? It was in six, seven days. Literally six, seven days. You had 12, no. pounds 12 pounds of filth. Gone. Went to the beach in early October, and I looked, my wife was like, wow, you look really good. And I'm like, I know. I don't. I, I guess it's this oxy powder. I've been trying to get her to take it. She's, she's like, well, I don't know. I said, no, you're going to take it. So you did all this stuff, and it got some of the weight down, but yep. not the rest of the way. Well, I mean, for me, it's all a synergy but I wish I'd have taken it years ago when they were henpecking me to take it. Yeah, I mean, like, literally 12 pounds melted off in less in about a week. I'd say a week, seven days, and I, I've been able to keep it off too. I'm I'm I measured myself last night actually. I'm like, well, let's see what I'm at. 202. How often do you take the ox powder now? I haven't taken it since that one week time, but I'm going to take it probably after Thanksgiving. I think that's so. I think every three months I'm just going to. So how many pills made you lose 12 pounds? It, well, so, so you did seven for uh, six days. And five. And then five the first day. So seven times five is 35, plus five, about 40 pills. So it's not even not even a quarter of the bottle, really. Well, how many pills are it's in? 120. Yeah. So literally, like, one bottle, if, you know, I don't, I don't take it every day. I did it for that. I did it intensely, you, and you really have to stick to it. And by the third or fourth day, you're like, I don't know if I want to keep doing this. If you just get through it, it's not really that. It's not bad at all. Considering the weight I lost. I mean, I could never lose the weight doing any other way, you know, that quickly. Well, this is the final thing people, Hollywood stars do to lose that final amount of weight. Yeah, if you're going to, if you got a wedding or something coming up, I'd say. And groups in here in the office like months ago going, look, see this star, she did it. And look at this, Alex, just, I'm telling you, it's the best thing I got. Uh, you need to sell it. Uh. It definitely works. And, you know, I'm, I'm also doing the X2 and uh, a little DNA force, but. I mean, the main thing that I saw the biggest, fastest improvement was oxy powder, and I'm I'm totally amazed with it. And I'm, after Thanksgiving, I'm going to do another round. And the great part is, we can go out, research, bring people the most cutting edge products, and then fund the operation with it. It's a win, win, win. And then all we get is rave reviews. We never get negative reviews. We don't screen the calls. It's joke level good that we can just bring people the very best stuff at very affordable prices, fund our operation, and then they love us. And then they help us, we help them, and everybody's lovey dove at a good price too. You know, I, I, you know, what would you pay to lose uh, twelve pounds in a week? Well, how much would you pay for that? That's what you got to ask yourself. Yeah, see, that's what I do. I do it for a couple of days, then go ah, and I lose you, a couple of pounds. You got to just keep playing. I know, I got to do it. You got to do it. You got to get that full six days in, and uh, and really just go through the system. It says it on the back where to start. Now, Oxy Powder Infowarslife dot com or eight 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 two five three three one three nine. And 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. And again, your purchase of all the InfoWarsLife.com products or the pro-gun t-shirts, the films, the books at InfoWarsStore.com funds the operation and another key... Pray for this operation. We're praying for America and the rest of the world and you as well. We need those prayers. That's number one. But secondarily, support our local AM and FM affiliates. Become sponsors. Uh, become uh, supporters of local sponsors. Pay, call the station up and say, I want to pay for a billboard to promote the Alex Jones show. That's how we're going to take this country back. We're so close, folks. We are so close. Fox News is calling for Boehner to step down. I mean, come on. We're close. <laughs> Billy Corrigan of Smashing Pumpkins should be landing in Vegas right now. And they're trying to get to his hotel to be interviewed in the third hour. So look for that to happen. They'll respond to Anderson Cooper's attacks and more. Tell us about his new album. It was his take on the world. Always an informative and popular interview. Hadn't been on this in about a year. Uh, Professor uh, Daryl Hamamoto will be joining us to talk about divide and conquer. Uh, war they're trying to start. He was on with us. First time, I think, five, six months ago, and you now see how much of his predictions have unfortunately come true. That's all coming up.
Look at this report by Washington's blog up on Infowars.com. The media is focusing on the wrong Senate torture report. The big story torture everyone is missing. And I agree with his report. It gets into the Armed Services Committee of 2009 that details the systematic widespread torture across the board. But that's not even as bad as the torture report from 2000, I think it's 2007 or 8, General Tagumbu report. Type in General Tagumbu torture report. He's the Filipino-American general, three-star general that did that investigation. And that was the real one where they admitted the raping ch children with large objects dripping with acid in front of their parents in Iraq and places, killing people, non-terror related, just, just, just demons being hired. Now, the military was ordered to hire former federal prison guards who had records on purpose, rape, you name it. So that's what I mean. The, 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 the Feinstein report's a whitewash. But the report reads, while the torture report released by the Senate Intelligence Committee is very important, it doesn't address the big scoop regarding torture. Instead, it is the Senate Armed Services Committee report that dropped the big bombshell regarding U.S. torture program. Senator Levin, commenting on the Armed Services Committee report on torture in 2009, explained. I like the Washington blog because he just takes all these quotes. His articles are mainly just quotes and documents. The techniques are based on tactics used by Chinese communists against American soldiers during the Korean War for the purpose of eliciting false confessions for propaganda purposes. <clears throat> Techniques used in SEER training, see, they torture you to learn how to withstand torture. Well, now they just use that as torture. And it goes over what's already known. I mean, folks, almost everybody I know that was in the Army and the Marines and was an officer or non-commissioned, I mean, there was just torture everywhere. It's just, just torture buffet. Beggs was in here yesterday talking about it. Former senior U.S. intelligence official familiar with the interrogation issued by Cheney and former Defense Secretary Donald H. Rumsfeld demanded that the interrogators find evidence of al-Qaeda in Iraq to back up that false claim, McClatchy News reported. So, yeah, this article is a flashback to 2009 to a much more detailed report that was honest. And see, that's the thing. People say there's nobody good in government. A lot of good reports come out. It's usually government blowing the whistle. And then it's the public that doesn't hold the feet to the fire of the perpetrators. And I'm going to say it again. Uh, this week I've had some publications and a bunch of big radio hosts attack me going, Alex Jones is a traitor. He don't want to torture the people that blew up our World Trade Center. Oh, shut up. Raping a five-year-old in front of their parents in Iraq who's been picked up at a checkpoint because they had a gun in the car with battery acid does not keep America safe. It turns us into Jeffrey Dahmer and it removes God's hedge of protection from us when we endorse it publicly. Just like people endorsing abortion. I don't judge somebody that's had one and didn't think it was a child. But once you know it's a child and once you know it's an anti-human agenda, people say, oh, there are too many kids. So uh, I mean, you people are sick. And then you've got nerve to sit here and tell me because... Why didn't any of our founders torture? Why has it always been known to be what something the good guys don't do? You just turn your back on all that and then have the nerve to sit around. It's such an easy cheap shot. He don't want to torture the people that killed us on 9-11. I mean, what a crock. All right, second hour. Time's the news. Stay with us. I'm Alex Joe. Merry Christmas from everybody here at InfoWars. And a great new year coming up. By the way, I want to give you some of the history of torture here before our guest comes up. Just kind of a gestalt of it. If in a tribe, a little uh, troop, a little village of, say, 120 individuals, whether it was in ancient Africa or ancient Europe, ancient what's Asia today, China, Central Asia, Pakistan, wherever, if the people in the tribe caught somebody, say, strangling a five- or ten-year-old child for no reason, and there were two or three witnesses that saw it, and those witnesses uh, weren't related because you wouldn't trust that, that they would call in the town elders, maybe five, six people, and then they would ask everybody what they thought, and they'd say, yeah, it's clear you did it. 
grab him. And then they tie you down and beat your brains out or throw you off a cliff or throw you in a fire or whatever the case may be. That is a natural response. And I'm for the death penalty when you catch somebody red-handed. The problem is you can't trust a big, corrupt, evil government when it turns out in many cases up to a third of people on death row are totally innocent. Now, the argument is, well, they got caught seven times robbing banks or, you know, they got caught kidnapping two other times. So we thought they were guilty. So so what if we execute them? It doesn't matter. It's better that 15 men, as has been said in a maxim, forget who said it. Guys, look up the quote. It's better that, you know, 10, I think the actual quote is, it's better that 10 guilty men go free than one innocent man be imprisoned or killed. <clears throat> I think it's a Supreme Court justice from 100 years ago. But the, what I'm getting at here is, as I digress... If I, I mean, I've been in the parking lot before and seen some guy haul off and punch a woman in the face. And I've gone over and said, you better stop that right now. What the hell's your problem? And they've got to my face. And I've said, listen, by that time, people were calling the cops. That was like 20 years ago. And it wasn't, it's not because I'm a hero. I don't like seeing some big guy punch a woman in the eye and give her a black eye. At an instinctive level, that's just not right. The one thing, if she hit him or something, you know, then it would be a thing of passion. But guys beating up women at an instinctive level, I don't like that. So I think of my mother, I think of my daughters. But before I had daughters, I instinctively don't like women being messed with. I have that instinctive thing to protect women and children. That's what men are for. That's what we do. You're not a man if you don't want to do that. But, I mean, I guarantee you, if I... There's been a lot of cases that you read about in the news where a dad opens the door and some 40-year-old guy is raping his 10-year-old son, and the dad kills him, and they don't even indict him much less having grand jury non bellum. Everybody gets that. There was a case just north of Austin that happened a few uh, last this year, I think, and the dad beat the guy to death. There's been cases where a drunk driver runs over somebody's kid right in front of their house. The dad sees their dead son. All the, There was another Texas case. Goes and gets his gun, kills him. Grand jury doesn't indict. That's not torture. That's not when you beat somebody to death and want them to hurt. You're hurt. So torture is natural in the moment, in the passion where you've caught the person, you know they've done it, and you're going to bash their brains out. And in the moment you have that killer instinct, you're not enjoying it, but it's like stepping on a cockroach. You have the energy and the will to just sit there and throw their head up against a wall or smash it with killer force. Most people have a governor. They, they decide to not kill. They, they decide to not slam that head down hard enough where it breaks open. You can do it. You just decide. You die. And you can kill them. That's how the real world works. So there's this tough guy instinct that gets misapplied by, yeah, they hit us on 11. Go ahead and torture them. You can't have a big nasty government do that because it'll do it for fake confessions and it'll do it to you. That's why you don't do it. Not because we're wimps and, well, why do the Russians and the Chinese do it? Well, I, because they're barbarous countries that never got reformed. You got freedom in Russia? No. We're losing ours here now, and they're promoting torture and spying and, and everything else. And Russia's trying to reform itself, but Western pressure isn't letting it do it. Billy Corrigan of Smashing Pumpkins has been demonized by CIA operative Anderson Cooper and others as of late. He's going to be joining us if his plane gets in on time. If not, he'll be on with us Sunday. Billy Corrigan coming up. Professor Daryl Hamamoto has been on a couple times with us. Popular guest. He's taught at the University of California, Davis, for most of his academic career. He holds undergraduate and graduate degrees in political science, popular culture studies, and comparative culture. Hamamoto is a senior ranking professor in the Department of Asian American Studies. He is a recognized authority in U.S. media, popular culture, and sexuality, having published extensively in these areas. Hamamoto is a recipient of the Rockefeller Foundation Research Fellowship, UCLA. So he thinks it's funny that he's exposing them with their own money. That's interesting. And is a um, Fulbright scholar, Japan. His current project is a volume that outlines the principles of the New World Order Theory and is directed to the current generation college and university undergraduates in search of alternatives to the dominant foundation-guided corporatist curriculum. And he joins us. I, I meant to play this clip a few days ago when I had guests on about it, but didn't get to it. Uh, angry black lady is going through a line and she says, I need free water here because it's a form of reparations, you know, free bottled water. And it just goes to the mindset of, of, of this new super underclass that the system's trying to grow with open borders. 
to where you've just got completely dependent individuals. And the foundations, the Ford Foundation and others, are on record saying this is their plan 50 years ago. Well, Professor Hamamoto teaches classes on it, exposing it, and has gotten a lot of heat for it. The good news is a lot of other universities now are, have classes on New World Order theory and conspiracy theory. There's a couple I know at UT uh, that are positive uh, you know, views of it. I mean, I don't know how you couldn't if you're objective. There's obviously conspiracies. There's obviously foundation-funded corporatist operations. They had the church committee showing that, and the, you know, Sutton uh, at, in Congress showing that. I mean, that's really what's quarterbacking the whole deal. Uh, I was four years ago at Bilderberg in Virginia. Uh, an individual showed up out of the National Archives and gave me secret documents we published from a famous U.S. senator's private papers getting orders from Bilderberg Group on how to take over the country. Uh, so as, as funny as, as some of these racists are, you can laugh at toothless Klan people, you know, go, we are supreme people, and then they're on welfare. Or equally ignorant and mindless, in my view, racist lady saying white people deserve to pay me everything. The point is this: the, the system is trying to make this the dominant culture, a bunch of infighting, a tower of Babel, so the centralized system can dominate us. It's classic divide and conquer. I know we hammer that, but the point is people are starting to figure this out. So let's play the clip of the uh, crazy black lady that wants the free water. This video came out last week uh, on one of the big uh, hip-hop websites. Here it is. Yes, slavery. You always slavery. I don't care about that. My, my grandmother lived 104. To you know how look Here. And, okay. and, and right here. My family didn't care about my grandma lived, but she just died this year. Okay. She was a slave. Okay. okay. You right here in Stone Mountain. You can go and you Who can see Who says that all ancestors want was. slaves? Hold on, I'm, talking, I'm talking about in this country that built this country. And we don't get no reparations. But y'all come over here. Hold on. McDonald's, uh -huh. okay, which is a very huge company. I know there black was a people slow, that was a that was a small company, but they don't charge you for no water. You come over here, you get all kinds of tax breaks, but then you charge us for the water? Are you serious? We're the one that built the pipes under this Hold building, on. baby. Wait, 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 wait. We, we pay for it. Corporate? This is private. I don't care. I don't give a damn. Just because you love doesn't make you I right. I don't care. And no, it's not about being right. It's about what happened. What's the truth? What's interesting is she actually makes a good point, but she projects onto foreigners who aren't even white that they're involved in slavery or somehow they owe her free water. And then at the same time, she points out that foreigners do get like a 10-year tax break when they start businesses, which I think is discriminatory. I'm not against new citizens, but yeah, why is that? Because they want to drive down wages. They want to create the balkanization that they've now created. That's the reason for it. This Tower of Babel. Let's go back to the fighting. I mean, what? You're, you're not a slave. Right and my right. You're not a slave. My right. I come from slavery. No, you didn't. So we do too. We're African, and, so we know. You don't know where the pause. Where from. Just By the way, she's calling them foreigners. They're obviously black Americans as well. This is on World Star Hip Hop. I mean, this is just crazy, man. Now the black people are racist, too. Here, here, here I have to give her free water. Here, let's go back to it. My parents were born in Africa, but good job. We're African Americans. I guess they are foreign. Much if you want Kenya, Nigeria. Nigeria. Our parents were born in Africa. Okay, in Africa. Yes, in pause. Africa, not African Americans. By the way, there is a big difference between African immigrants and African Americans in the statistics. You know, some of the African Americans do think everything should be free and have this chip on the shoulder. For some legitimate reasons, but the chip just ends up hurting them. And then they're they're telling, I guess one lady is from the U.S. and and, and but then the guy running the store with her is an African from Africa. And you run into the Africans that start businesses; they just don't have that big chip on their shoulder. They just want to make money and be successful. But I guess they're bad too because they own a nice convenience store. Let's go back to the clip. American. What the hell does that mean? African you know mean, that mean? American means that your ancestors were bought over no, here through the doesn't. slave shit. It doesn't really yes, make it does. sense. Yes, it does. No, it That's really what doesn't. it does. That's what it your means. African soldier. My dad, my dad, my dad is a Nigerian. Okay, okay. for real. My okay. dad's from but my, but my grandmother, my ancestry comes from slavery. My grandmother was here when slavery. What's this going to do with anything? Because, because y'all come over here. Who's and you yours? Your Who's own. yours? Who's yours? I'm saying your ancestry. Who's our your ancestors? ancestors? Where are we from? Yeah. Your country. Where are we, where, You're not from that? here? Where is that? You're not from here? So where are we? Where are we from? Your mother, your mother's mother wasn't raised here. My, my generation only.
me go back one generation. You know where my mother's sister is screaming. Do you know where my mother's sister is You know where my mother's sister is screaming. You know where my mother's sister is screaming. But you don't know what. So, where, 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 so you think that. You think that. The only thing I'm saying is, y'all come over here and I'm saying, y'all, because the majority, we can go in my community. I live in Lithonia. All right, the full clip is up on Infowars.com. was up there a few days ago, but let's repost the full clip if we can. Because this is what entitlement's all about. And it's not to even empower the lady. How about we're entitled to not be spied on? How about we're entitled to be able to own guns and defend ourselves? How about we're entitled to not have psyops and government propaganda with our taxpayer money foisted on us? How about we're entitled to have the government follow the law and not torture people? How about we're entitled to not have a government involved in social engineering to divide us? Professor Daryl Hamamoto joins us. Thank you so much. I wanted to air that just to... Break down what you're talking about. I'm going from memory. But I think the first time you visited with us was maybe six months ago, and you were, you were predicting they were trying to start a massive new racial division along every line as their social engineering program goes into high gear. That has indeed happened, Professor, as you predicted it. Uh, one of the top experts on this type of social engineering. Break down what you currently think is going on. Well, first, let me address that that uh, clip that you just aired. Um, for me, the way I look at it, this is a, a living example of the woman who's the product most likely of multi-generational state-managed welfareism, which uh, upper middle class and middle class and professional blacks in the uh, professions and the service industry manage as a comprador class. Uh, this is what you see on uh, Fox News and CNN and, and individuals going on talking about how uh, your children belong to the state versus a recent immigrant from Africa, south of the Sahara, whose family does not have a history of welfareism, who are entrepreneurs and are interested in only uh, earning a livelihood for their families. Uh, but perhaps a better representation of sentiment amongst the black underclass is a very poignant encounter between uh, Joel Gilbert, the director, and his new uh, DVD, his documentary, I think it's called A Place Called Utopia, where he goes into a Detroit neighborhood and interviews uh, welfare recipients, so-called welfare, because it's not really welfare. It's uh, modern um, neo-plantation slavery. And uh, he polls him, he's canvassing them, he's, getting, he's trying to get their, their uh, sentiments, their ideas about what it's like. And it's quite impressive, the, the sense of um, not just struggle, but resistance to this, this system that's keeping them down. They're, aware, they're dimly aware of it, and they don't like it. They want off of it. They want to contribute. They want to work. They want to be productive. And that's, that's innate to all humanity. We want to produce. We want to reproduce. We want to extend ourselves as a species into the future. And work is a linchpin of that very idea of civilization. And that's been stripped of us here in America systematically over the years, and it's accelerating. And the bad news, it's now the middle class, including middle class professionals, are the next uh, group to fall. And that's the Agenda 21 globalist plan on record. I want you to break down why the ruling system has decided to go to this. They've got the robots coming out to replace us, even the military to be replaced. Men aren't even going to be able to fight anymore, even though there's obvious cultural problems with war. That is still an instinct that has a proper place. That's to be removed. Women can't be feminine anymore. They really want it homogenized. They claim they want sexual liberation and freedom, but really the end game in my view, is to actually end our sexual natures and actually end our diversity. Uh, it's an anti-human movement. It's going to be a monoculture, mono-government, mono-sexuality, mono-everything. It's going to be synthesized into uh, the, the type of utopian equality that uh, the, your uh, Huxley-type people have been envisioning for uh, close to 100 years now. But... Uh, in thinking about some of your earlier comments in today's program, including uh, pension bust outs and all that, I more and more understand uh, that places like the University of California are really uh, the microcosm of this, this, this plan. It's a microcosm of the new world order, if you will, that will be imposing this regime. And it's in, uh, in an advanced stage of imposing this regime of GMOs, which are affecting our our intellect, our reproductive capacity, 
uh, bringing in the borderless economy, so-called, sin fronteras, right? The internationhood, the international sovereignty, um, the genderless society, and then very importantly, uh, ethnic balkanization. So the, the question is, uh, these ideas, these uh, pieces of social, political, economic, and cultural engineering don't come out of nowhere. They have a, uh, a genesis, they have a point of origin. And one of the main points of origin is the University of California. Most of these agenda items that are being implemented by the quote unquote new world order uh, are funded by the foundations. I have been a recipient of these foundation grants. And this is what they, uh, the people who print the money, uh, including private family foundations, they go in there and they, they set an agenda by doling out money in, a, in specific areas, in specific areas only. Uh, you notice that the Soros Foundation or the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, they do not fund initiatives that deal with uh, neighborhood entrepreneurialism, immigrant business entrepreneurialism, or anything that has to do with the free market or any other aspects of a free and healthy society. Anything decentralized, they are against it. And when you look at the plan, they all say it's liberal, classical American liberalism. But it's the opposite of liberalism. It is a Borg hive post-human <laughs> system. It's post-human. It's transhuman. And it's, uh, I guess, the best uh, image is that it's, uh, it's a molester that's handing you the candy. You know, it's quite seductive. Someone like Gruber, of course, uh, is motivated by status. He was the the kid in junior high school who had his gym trunks pulled down. And he spent the rest of his life trying to pay back uh, all these bullies. And that's really endemic to academia. What you're seeing is gruberismo, uh, I call it. And it's all these very, very little people who happen to be uh, somewhat smart and they have credentials. And uh, they're, uh, well, I don't know if I can psychoanalyze, but they're paying back the society, but they're also getting the rewards uh, and their recognition and the accolades um, by these uh, illusory well, sure, I watched a bunch of those videos in full, not just the clips we played. And he mm -hmm. would be there teaching professors and Ph.D. students how to lie and how the world really works. So I guess you get a Ph.D. now, according to him, to learn the inside baseball of pure B.S. And whereas that always went on from what I've seen in some special Ph.D.s in the last hundred years in this country in England and Germany, it wasn't mm -hmm. like they'd get on C-SPAN and brag about it. Uh, so it does show really the arrogance the arrogance of how stupid they think we are. It's arrogance. And uh, I was listening to one of your earlier interviews this week. Uh, I forgot who the guest was, but he uh, referred to it as a narcissism. A lot of these uh, high ranking military. That's Dr. It's Steve Pachenik. Yeah. Dr. Steve Pachenik. Great, great mind, great intelligence and great analyst. And uh, I, I really enjoy listening to him. Uh, his fiction's not so great. <laughs> but I like him as a uh, <laughs> political uh, analyst. I, you know, I read everything. I check check into all, all your guests. But yes, uh, it's endemic to all the institutions. This is the maybe the outgrowth uh, of the me generation, the narcissistic generation of the 1960s, which was also a psyop, which was also a product of culture engineering. We're seeing this. We have to, going into the next uh, year, 2015, uh, learn a bit of humility and uh, reject hubris because uh, universally and uh, through time, uh, the poets, the writers have warned us in so many different ways that this this is what happens to individuals like Gruber. And he's, he's just emblematic of a large number and growing numbers of, of people, even people of the underclass who, are who feel that they're entitled to have a free bottle of water. Um, so we have to, uh, I think, take... Uh, look very deeply in our, into our souls over the holidays and um, see what we can do to help inspire young people. Uh, for example, I'm, a, I'm an educator and I'm trying to teach these values. Fortunately, uh, a lot of my students are the children of immigrants, of refugees. They understand the work ethic. They understand the sacrifices that their parents are making for them. And they understand through their parents the value of enterprise, family, and all really basic core American So do values. they understand how the social engineers are trying to co-op them? Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. 
And I warned them not to fall into the clutches of the university curricular establishment and uh, student services, which has taken that energy, taken that vitality, that youth, that idealism, warping it, twisting it, and misdirecting it, and smashing it with the end game of destroying their spirit and their soul. So they, too, will enter this new larger uh, controlled welfare system. This is what's going on, uh, I think, nationally, talking to different colleagues. That's right. Um, young people are really, really being assaulted, including their finances, student debt. Uh, it's pretty common now in even corporate media that the amount of student debt is much, much worse and higher and, and much more, uh, will be more devastating. And they're going to bankrupt the education the when they're done with the bubble and then nationalize it fully, just like they're going to bankrupt the pensions and then nationalize it. But it's not even nationalized, it's private interest. We're being conquered. And the minute people realize that, it's game over. Now, obviously, the Republican Party's full of a bunch of crooks at the top, but, but this major political realignment now Boehner is ignoring all of it. Uh, they're going to go with the open border. They're going to go with the banker bailouts. They're going to sign on to derivative bailouts. Just, just more, more, more. But politically, they did send a bunch of new people there uh, who are trying to fight against that, some of them. But I think the message, even though imperfect, shows there is an awakening happening. There's a mass awakening, even uh, large numbers and growing numbers of uh, self-satisfied professors who live in college towns and think they're immune from the currents of uh, economic decline and think that re they really believe that race, ethnicity and gender are the, is the end all and be all of understanding. And, and it only explains a really, really small part of, of uh, the problems that we're facing. So what I have done in order to uh, get them into the tent, so to speak, is to bring to their attention that uh, their security is an illusion. Their retirement, their pension, the UC uh, investment fund has been eyed hungrily by the wolves of Wall Street for many years now. And they're just waiting for an opportune time to go in there for the kill. They're kind of circling the prey right now. They're taking uh, their pulse. But once I make my colleagues aware that this is their strategy, and they have Janet Napolitano in place there, and they have the MRAPs and the militarized campuses there in case there's any sort of dissent, and they have the students bought off in their little ethnic identity politics uh, going on. They got them nicely protests. balkanized and segregated like the old city of Rome. Precisely. They have all the different uh, factions and perpetual tension. And they bring in um, presidents or chancellors such as Linda Katehi, who's a, a Greek national. I don't know if she's even a U.S. citizen, who, according to my research, and this is this is how, how you attack them. You do your homework, you find the biography. It's very easy. It's open source. And she comes from um, um, a, a network, an international network to um, nationalize and socialize and globalize institutions of higher education. Of course. It, of course, absolutely, and she's one of the, she was a, one of the leading consultants for the destruction of the higher education system in Greece. Yep, and that is uh, coterminous with with the destruction of the larger Greek economy. They go hand in hand. Well, notice so, how they use mainstream media. This is a formulae to to attack and, and dumb people down, but then that discredits it. Then they just get rid of it entirely and have nothing but direct government pronouncements. This is the plan. The people that sell out to it within 20, 30 years end up being betrayed. And now it's compressing where it's happening quicker and quicker. That's right. Individuals like uh, Linda Katehi and her underlings and Chip Janet Napolitano and even Professor Gruber, they think that they cannot run the history train, but they won't be able to. They'll be uh, pulled out beneath it, uh, just like the rest of us, perhaps a little bit later down the line. It really but is again, crazy. I mean, I mean, Congress thought they could turn the NSA loose to spy on everybody and that they wouldn't be spied on and blackmailed by it. And now we know what's going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have information and and uh, data and uh, it's Rupert Murdoch uh, in Britain is involved in the hacking scandal. Even the royals have all most of their personal information in the database for blackmail and control. Exactly. And, uh, and we see all these pedophile scandals coming out now to force I was say. England to go into the EU. Uh, this is really a diabolical plan. I don't know how the couple thousand people, uh, even the Kissinger Group says it's less than 6,000 people that manage it, uh, only a few dozen families that run it.
they have created a monster to dominate us that will be the monster that undoubtedly destroys them. Professor, stay with us. We'll be right back on the other side. I want to take some phone calls for you, but also give you the floor to cover all the hot topics that I know you're covering and what you're telling your students. Professor Daryl Hamamoto from UC California uh, is joining us. We'll give the number out when we come back. Stay with us. Billy Corgan. I always see Corrigan. I know it's Corgan. I've known him for a long time. He's so nice to put up with that when I say it wrong. One of the guys just pointed it out, or Leanne did. Billy Corgan of Smashing Pumpkins is going to be joining us coming up in the next hour. I want to open the phones up for Professor, who joins us right now. But I want to give him some time, Professor Daryl Hamamoto, to get into any other big points he wants to make here today, to talk about any repercussions he's had. Uh, I know they've criticized him before for speaking out. Uh, about how they're trying to create a Hispanic racial block in this country for social engineering purposes and a permanent underclass because they don't want folks to learn English. It's the world language. They would be upwardly mobile. They want to keep them in their little barrios where the El Jefes can control them, just, just as we see a permanent underclass in Mexico. Uh, here's the headline today, Mexico's season of scandal and violence as it descends into hell, Business Week. How is that our fault and why should we merge with that? We should try to reform it. But our system wants to go to that model instead of having this model because we're run by crooks by and large. Uh, so the toll-free number to join us with your quick comment or question for the professor is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Your comment, your question for Professor Daryl Hamamoto 800-259-9231. I'm Alex Jones, your host. The news websites are infowars.com, prisonplanet.com. The nightly news site is prisonplanet.tv. I've been around 20 years now. It's now 20 years on air plus. We're into our 20 plus years. It's 20, so we're into the 21st year to be technical, but 20 years on air. And we've had for about 15 years PrisonPlanet.tv, all my films, the nightly news, the daily radio show, commercial video podcast, a bunch of books, other videos. It's usually $54 a year. It's now $29.95 or roughly half off. Uh, a, a huge deal. That's $250 a month. And you can share it with 20 people. So a great way uh, to get your Christmas shopping done, get 20 gifts for uh $29.95, or get a $5.95 one-month membership and share that with up to 20 people. Uh, and, of course, uh, your signing up helps fund the operation as well. So thank you all for your support, PrisonPlanet.tv. We're running a bunch of specials today as we self-fund. We're having an X2 sale. We basically sold out of that, but just got another limited supply in the last of the year of the Super X2 Deep Earth Crystal Source um, iodine that's done so much for myself. You've heard the rave reviews. First ever sale on X2 where it's by itself. Our most popular supplement, 17% off and free shipping only on X2 throughout the rest of the week until the 17th. That's the last day we can guarantee you'll get it before Christmas. Was $29.99, now it's $24.99. That's $5 off and free shipping. That's another $5 value roughly. With uh, shipping, you would have paid $38. Now you're paying $24.95 and no shipping. Very limited time sale, only through next Monday. Order now, get it before Christmas, and it also makes a great Christmas present. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. We're also running specials on Super Detox Special, Fluoride Shield, and X2. 46% off Bio Defense Pack, Survival Shield X2, and Lung Cleanse. Uh, that's now 58% off InfoWars Life Challenge, Super Mail, Super uh, Survival Shield, 42% uh, off. All available, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. All right, Professor, I'm going to stop ranting here. I want to give you the floor for seven, eight minutes to talk about whatever you think's front and center instead of me asking the questions. Then we're going to take some calls. Great. First, Alex, uh, congratulations on your 20 years of broadcasting. Your Thank work, you. uh, the contributions of your fine guests, your, your reportage team uh, has directly influenced and informed not just my lectures, which, of course, uh, has reached any number of students by now, but also my scholarship. There's a book, a new book of mine that's in the mail to you that uh, explicitly acknowledges your contribution to my own uh, intellectual development. Well, thank and, you. I'm honored. I can't wait to maybe carry the book and obviously have you oh, on about it once I've read it. Absolutely. 
And also just as sort of a uh, experiment, 10, uh, 10 minutes prior to uh, having this conversation with you, I took some uh, Secret 12. It's, a, it's basically a liquid B12 vitamins, put it uh, sublingually. And I take this right before the lectures because uh, my goal is to be as uh, fluid and slick as uh, Joel Osteen, <laughs> one of our favorite uh, glitter bug preachers. For the international audience. <laughs> well, you're a sweetheart for plugging it. We really are proud of Secret 12. Thank you so much, brother. It's great. Thank you. Well, thank you. It, it, it does work. It's, uh, it does something to the synapses. Well, thank you. So, I, mean, um, I, I mean, I've asked so many questions here, but front and center, what are you yes. most focused on right now? Well, you, you uh, alluded earlier to some of the, uh, the trials and tribulations that I've experience, been experiencing at the University of California. Uh, it's been almost a, not complete, but almost a complete reversal of fortune since that time. And the reason for that, again, it goes back to the power of information and analysis and the power of the pen, because my book came out and everything that I've been uh, talking about and teaching in, at the uh, classroom level is now codified three-dimensionally in a book. Uh, also, a colleague of mine who's been uh, harassed uh, con continuously, and uh, just to show you the, the viciousness of the university system, she uh, was declared clinically dead due to a, a massive uh, health crisis, which I won't go into detail. And she published a path-breaking uh, law school journal article, which, by the way, if any of your listeners or viewers uh, internationally or in the U.S., would like a copy of that journal article, have them email me and I'll send them a PDF of it. It's a great article because it combines her own tribulations as a woman, as a female, as a scholar who's trying to forge new paths in academic and social cultural analysis, who was relentlessly per persecuted by her own department, who, by the way, are also Asian American. So this idea of uh, uniform white oppression is really, 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 <laughs> it's a cliche. It's become a cliche, and it's not really completely uh, accurate anymore. We have to get beyond that. Yeah, gangs of humans oppress other humans, period. Absolutely. And, and in yesterday's concluding lecture, uh, uh, I got a box of chocolates from and a card from an appreciative student. But at yesterday's lecture, I pointed out that Mao Zedong, who was, of course, as you know, a Yale, Yale in China, and he was uh, cultivated by the OSS. You've spoken to that many, many times in this show. And that information is available in um, mainstream publications, histories. Uh, I cited the fact that uh, he's Han Chinese, and he was responsible for the death of uh, upwards of 80 million fellow Han, Han Chinese. So where does the race and ethnicity critique uh, fit into that model. It doesn't really explain it. it. The race, ethnicity, gender critique does not explain the economic uh, meltdown that we're experiencing currently. And I think, and I'm working on this, this is speculative, but I think that the diversion of energy, intellectual, scholarly, and student energy from the real important monumental issues of our time has itself been engineered. It seems like the foundations are pouring tons and tons of money on race, ethnicity, and gender studies to the exclusion of other modes of analysis. And that comes out of the elite institutions so that people like Professor Gruber can do his dirty work in the dark. This is what's going on here. It's same with the humanities. Again, speculative, but the reason why students are dropping out of the humanities in droves is because there's something called the theory scare that took hold in academia in 1970s. And I think I alluded to this in an earlier conversation with you. Instead of reading the great classics, Dostoevsky, which I'm reading again now as an adult, it has much more impact on me as a, as a grown-up person. Uh, instead of reading these classics, they were just engaging in uh, literally fraudulent um, uh, high theoretical philosophical screeds by people like Paul Dumont. They were people that were imported primarily from France. And I think that was a psyops. I, if, if, if any uh, enterprising PhD student wants to do a forensic analysis of it, it was sort of like the 1960s when all the LSD and the peace and love and the fake counterculture was brought in by people like Stuart Brand and uh, Timothy Leary. Uh, once that uh, glow started to wear off, uh, the humanities, which traditionally has been the source of dissent and uh, incisive uh, speculative thinkers uh, with artistic skills that can help humanity progress forward. They brought all these uh, foreign intellectuals like Jacques Derrida and all these people. They're still studying 
in the English departments. Now, if they started studying the humanities, the Renaissance, classical Greek, Roman societies, Sumerian, Babylonian, from a new world order perspective, looking at some of the occultic elements that underlie these different cultures, I think they would have students hanging off the rafters in humanities courses. They're bored. Students are not buying it anymore. They're sick of it. The, the race, ethnicity, gender model has been in place for 40 years. It's been funded by the Ford Foundation. And by the way, there are academic books coming out right now, currently, that are tracing institutionally how how entities like the Ford Foundation have hijacked academic discourse, scholarly production uh, at the university. Well, sure, so, and Eisenhower in his farewell address warned of that, not just the military industrial complex. He talked about an academic um, elite in intellectual circles creating with federal funding a unified system because they are worried about classical liberalism, Thomas Jefferson liberalism. Absolutely. They're scared to death of it. So they create mainly like a new cult of it where, A, either men only sit around and talk about sports, which is its own mindless diversion, or let's talk about race and let's talk about uh, sexual stuff and let's talk about, you know, how women, have, instead of just living and actually being liberal and free and open and, and being tolerant, Instead, it's you must adopt the one thing we're pushing. And then we learn it wasn't about tolerance at all. It was about getting in the mode of following orders and that it's actually a great uh, tyranny that we're facing. It's a form of uh, control, political economic control through, through cultural uh, indoctrination. And uh, unfortunately, the university uh, has been transformed into the side of this, this uh, indoctrination. Well, I know why your students are sick of it, because when I hear it, when I walk in and people <laughs> are watching ESPN and they start wanting me to talk about it, I just, I don't even get mad at them. I just leave. Or whenever people sit around at a table, I go to dinner with somebody and they start bringing up race and, uh, I mean, from a liberal or an other side of it, I'm like, hey, I'm done. I'm not discussing it. And, and I'm not saying I'm some great goody tissue, but... As you said, these issues, they took real evils, magnified them, set up a whole system around that uh, with guilt when it has nothing to do with it. And now they've replaced it with all these new despotisms, all these new oppressions. And they're just using it as this hot button issue where I don't care what color you are, people are paralyzed by it. And then actually don't mingle with people that look or act different because they're all so scared. And then, as you said, they can all then be controlled by their little local racial capo who then interfaces with the foundations and the government. And if any of those capos or chiefs ever get off the reservation, their money's cut off, they're targeted. But I think what you got at... You were attacked at first, but then when you fought back and didn't back off, then you got more support and the system backed off. And that's what I've experienced. When we have the facts, when we have the truth, when people are hungry for it now, when real revolution is in the air, a, a, a revolution of ideas, we're selling ideas that no army can stop. I mean, as Victor Hugo said, no army can stop an idea whose time has come, and that time has come. And I don't think the establishment can put this thing back together again, Professor. They cannot. The truth, uh, writing, uh, research, info wars, this will win the day for us. Uh, but in addition to that, it doesn't hurt if you lawyer up as well. And I, <laughs> I engage the service as one of the best. He's Mr. Dan Siegel. He's a civil rights attorney. In Oakland, California, he has uh, whipped the UC any number of times. And in my situation, he's going to hand them their butt. So it, it also takes the threat of a, a nice butt kicking, too. Well, good job. Intellect. Good Thank job. You. I'm glad you're able to continue with your free speech. Because when you Great. study real globalist publications, it's all conspiracy. I, I mean, it's not even really. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, mainline history books, it's in there. It's just that the students aren't given any of this. They're not. Uh, there's uh, just a sort of an inculcated linkage blindness, as uh, I would call it. There, uh, a lot of it is, has to do with the fact that uh, most professors stop growing after they receive tenure. They think that they're that they're over the hump there, uh, but they're going to start uh, waking up really quickly when they learn through my efforts and other people's 
that our uh, pension funds and our retirement and our investment funds are, are, are going to be systematically looted. And by the way, the University of California, this is a warning to other institutions, public uh, institutions or not. Uh, it seems like they're going for the so-called sustainability economy. So they've hitched their investment wagon to the gore and blood team, blood and core investment team, uh, sustainability, uh, weather change, Agenda 21, as you, uh, as you alluded to earlier. Because most people at, uni at universities are sort of hippy-dippy. They want to drive a Prius and wear Birkenstocks and have a ponytail. And that economy um, bankrupted Spain, so they've got to know absolutely. they're hitched to a loser. Yeah. And it's meant to lose. It's meant, They don't want a real sustainable economy. No. They want the sexy uh, austerity. I go to Whole Foods and half the magazines <laughs> are, it's great to be poor now. It's so right. cool, but then meanwhile, Obama's flying around Air Force One telling Africans they can't have cars or air conditioners. I yes. mean, why not say you can have clean cars and, and clean air conditioners? I mean, it's just, they're teaching us it's not good to progress as a new dark age to stop the renaissance that threatens the monopoly of power. We're going to do two, uh, two quick segments before Billy Great. Corrigan joins us with phone calls straight ahead. Pete, Eddie, Terrific. Julio, Frank. Dr. Kelly and others, your calls are straight ahead on the other side of this break. I'm Alex Jones, PrisonPlanet.tv. All right, we got two short segments to take phone calls, then Billy Corrigan should be off his plane into his hotel soon. Try to get him on. Billy Corrigan, was he Corrigan? Pete in Maryland, you're on the air with our guest. Go ahead. Oh, hey, it's an honor to speak with you, gentlemen. Um, yeah, um, Dr. Yamamoto, do you, do you foresee any um, top elitist like having a change of heart and um and like becoming whistleblowers or do, are they too entrenched in their divide and conquer mindset uh, i don't think anybody uh uh is is free of the possibility of of conversion or coming to their senses the uh the story of saul of tarsus is quite instructive right as alex mentioned earlier he was basically a thug a brute an enforcer for the Pharisees, and uh, he had a, a, a radical change of heart and spirit and mind. So yes, it's possible, and I'll go a little bit further than that. I, I uh, foresee uh, larger and larger numbers of defections from people as they feel uh, their own self-interest being threatened. You're absolutely right, and, and look, it's easy to cheat. It's easy to divide people. That's why so many cultures do it. There's always going to be some element of manipulation. Nobody's perfect. But we're, mm -hmm. we're into a decadent cycle right now where it's so intense, and they're using high-tech media systems to do it, and it's so toxic to everybody. We have to have a cultural awakening to these tactics and then reject them, just like we rejected GMO or non-organic, and it will start new economies of truth, new economies of being honorable, a, a, a re-entry of the age of chivalry, but 2.0. Thank you, Pete. Great question. Eddie in Illinois, you're on the air with Professor Hamamoto. Yeah, how you doing, Alex? Good, brother. I just want to say real quick that uh, I'm in the middle of uh, changing my life, and uh, I have a question. I uh, bought the uh, DNA force and oxy powder. I uh, lost my job. Uh, 816-820-57. Hold, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second, brother. It, we can't give phone numbers out on air, but I, I appreciate that because somebody could call in with somebody else's number as a form of harassment. And I'm not saying you're doing that, but we can't give phone numbers out. Sometimes we can give out 1-800 numbers if because you know, if, if it's a known number, but that's a tactic. Sometimes people call in to talk radio and give out, say, their ex-wife's phone number. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I just want to say I am uh, in this uh, seat in the season of uh, giving, you know, uh, in uh, Illinois, they're saying you can't film the cops. It's going to be a uh, felony. Uh, I'm getting ready to be evicted. I'm a very good person. I'm just wondering how I can, you know, I pray to God. No, I, I hear you, brother. Me. I hear you, and I appreciate your call. You know, you could give out your email if you wanted people to contact you locally and have them work with you. What's your email? Oh, he's gone. You know, you're going to see that as the economy collapses and more and more people can't get a job and, and, and are kicked off their unemployment. You're going to see more of that desperation. We have 50 million people roughly on food stamps. Imagine 50 million people a day lined up at soup kitchens. That would really expose what this economy has been converted to, Professor. Absolutely. And those numbers are rising. Uh, they're beginning to uh, affect the middle class. And uh, with the uh, lowering of... Uh, 
of immigration barriers, you're going to see a lot of professionals in the IT business and computer science and engineering uh, affected by uh, foreign workers that people like Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates want to have and uh, bring in to take their jobs away. And then that yeah. gets rid of one of the only first world countries, which then there's no point for the third world to run here. It's a giant sinking to giant race to the bottom. As Ross Absolutely. Perot warned us, we'll be back in 70 seconds and we'll talk to Frank, Dr. Kelly, Edward and others. Stay with us. Billy Corgan is in his hotel room. He'll be on with us in the next segment. Billy Corgan. Uh, we're taking phone calls right now. We're going to go to Frank in North Carolina. You're on the air with Professor Hamamoto. Go ahead, Frank. Yes, uh, Professor. I just wanted to lay out a quick tenure observation, and then I uh, really value your opinion. I'd like to ask you a question. I'm sure you'll have a good, interesting response. But I figure you're probably more intelligent, more informed than 99% of the people I come into contact with in any given year uh, here in my area of the country. Now, I keep seeing these headlines of the CIA justifying torture based on the 9-11 attacks, and I hear all these people calling into all these talk shows in my area, mostly saying that they agree with a policy of torture because of 9-11 and all that. Now, I know uh, that 9-11 was, uh, I guess just for, for the purposes of brevity here, uh, an inside job. Uh, and I hear from people, insiders like Dr. Steve Pachinik, that, over, that, that, that say that overwhelmingly the American people do not believe the official story of the 9-11 attacks. And I just keep wondering, uh, for, I've been away for 10 years, where are all these people? You're listening to niche fake right-wing radio where people just regurgitate talking points, the same cult as Democrats do. And so that's why you have pockets of this in many areas of the country as you have pockets that are really awake. I'd say 30% are really wise to what's going on. Another 20% knows something. And about half the public just doesn't care. But still, that type of percentage is huge. Um, let's get the professor's take on that. I'm skeptical of the numbers that are being produced there about uh, supposedly the majority of American people being in favor of torture. Um, I was perhaps trying to attribute this this hype to these trolls that uh, that call into these programs. You notice uh, these individuals who are pro torture do not call into the Alex Jones show. Uh, I don't hear them uh, calling into uh, Savage Nation. Uh, there are all these small, really uh, local television and uh, radio programs that uh, that court the, this very small constituency. And it, it's still very difficult for me to to wrap my mind around any notion that, that most Americans who are good and moral individuals, by and large, uh, would accept the abuse, the humiliation, the torture of human beings. I think most of them are, are like uh, Joe Biggs, who quite um, poignantly talked about the uh, screams, and then the weeping, and then the silence that followed, and that progression, uh, that's deeply affecting to most human beings, but perhaps I'm underestimating. Well, sure, and plus intellectually, it destroys the judicial system. You can't believe any confessions anymore if torture is no. going on. I mean, Absolutely, it, it completely, and perhaps that's why, why the torture regime has been put in place, is to... Uh, produce rot from the inside out and from the top down. Well, sure, plus there's the schizophrenic hypocrisy where anybody else that ever tortures bad. North Korea is bad or Nazi Germany is bad or, you know, blah, blah, mm. blah. But, oh, my gosh, when we do it, it's good. Now, let's let's uh, stick to the moral high ground. You can't go wrong by, by just doing what's right and what's moral and what's just. You're right, though. It is an attempt to infect us with corruption. Absolutely. This is part of the destruction of the culture. This is psyops. This is uh, programming of the highest sort, appealing to the basis, nate, uh, basis aspect of human nature. Well, Professor, yes. I have to plead ignorance and I apologize. I did not know you had a new book out. I'm going to read it as soon as I, it comes in oh. and as soon as that happens. I want to get you on for a full hour to go chapter by chapter through how you've put this into a scholarly dissertation on the subject. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much, Alex, and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Oh, I meant to ask you about that, but we're out of time. Colleges <laughs> banning Christmas. I mean, it's just amazing. All right, drop out. <laughs> All right, yeah. Thank you so much. We'll talk to Professor again soon. Billy Corgan coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us. That was Professor Daryl Hamamoto.
SmashingPumpkinsNexus.com is the website. SmashingPumpkinsNexus.com to find the new album that I just got in and can't wait to listen to the whole thing. Monuments to an LG. Want to find out what that means? Or elegy. <laughs> yeah, Tommy Lee, one of my favorite drummers, of course, of Motley Crue fame, uh, is uh, doing drums on the album. We're going to be playing... Uh, part of some of the songs here today but not in their entirety because that'll send the computer bots crazy out there on different internet platforms um, billy corgan is our guest or as i say it in texas drawl where we butcher names billy corrigan billy corgan leanne came here and said you know you're friends with him you ought to pronounce his name right billy corgan and he's not in a hotel room he's flown in and landed uh, he is in the airport right now uh, and uh, so I can't wait to have him back in studio next time he's in Austin. Uh, he's a regular listener, and he's just a great guy. I learned that he was a listener through a man cow, a, a fellow friend. And he's a really smart guy, one of the smartest people I've talked to, not just in music or entertainment, but period. And, and uh, Billy Corgan has actually taught me quite a bit about perspectives and how to see the world uh, and has helped me mature some. And I think that's why, out of the blue... For the last decade or so, you see just random hit pieces, even though there's no scandals, no dirt, nothing. That's why you see Anderson Cooper, admittedly, of the CIA attacking him. Now, that's why you see MSNBC saying snippy things, Rolling Stone saying snippy things. It's because he's outside of the system. He didn't play ball with them. He spoke out about the dumbing down of music with MTV and more. And they don't like smart people who have the power of reaching tens of millions who've sold 40 million albums. Just like Dave Mustaine. Their views may differ a little bit, but they agree on fighting tyranny. There's a global government. There's social engineering. Look at the demonization of him. Because if you let one ant stand up, they might all stand up. To quote, is it a bug's life? Th this is what we're talking about here. So he's joining us from the airport. I'll keep him to about 40 after, 45 after or so, so he can get on his next plane or get on down the road. He, he was going to be on with us yesterday, but I had a family emergency had to take care of. Uh, Billy Corgan, thank you so much for coming on with us. Oh, thank you, Alex. Always a pleasure to talk to you. You heard my intro there. There's so much to get into. Let's talk about Anderson Cooper first. Not that he even matters, has almost no viewers, dinosaur media. Uh, but at the same time, it's so clear that every time you've got an album about to come out, the hit pieces begin because they want to slap you down. Yeah, well, it's pretty strange. Uh, I don't know if your listeners know the context of this, but I did a, a, a cover for a charity called Pause Chicago. It's a no-kill shelter model. Very proud. Um, I've helped raise, uh, along with uh, my partner in the band, Jeff, about a quarter million dollars for the charity. Uh, one of my proudest things that I've ever done uh, is being involved in, in animal rights issues. And uh, it was about six months ago. You know, the image went viral. It's me and my rescue cats on the cover of the magazine. Never in a million years did I think I'd start getting attacked. And out of nowhere, four or five months later, there I am being made fun of. Uh, no context for the fact that it's a charity magazine. Basically presented as if I've fallen so far off the celebrity radar that I'm reduced to doing a cat magazine. Then, uh, then ties it into a kind of a wh wh where has he gone? What you know, wh you know, whatever happened to him kind of thing. Turned kind of make, mocking my participation in professional wrestling. No mention of my new album. No mention of my successes. Uh, nothing as if, as if I was some you know sort of a, I just disappeared off the you know the celebrity map. Very strange. And I think he's probably been a bit shocked by the reaction uh, because a I fought back. Uh, which you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to take your licks and just uh, put your tail between your legs because the mighty CNN has spoken. Uh, and on top of that, now a lot of animal rights people have raised up and started poking them in the eye because, uh, you know, it's 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 a, it's, a, it's something that, should, you know, uh, that's, a, that's a demarcation line that should be left alone. People doing charity work, um, it really is emblematic of the sickness of our culture. And by the way, you don't brag about that a lot, but I've seen it. You, you help a lot of charities out there, and you were helping save and rescue cats, raising and other you know tons of money, and you know really working in the community like I know you quietly do in and around Chicago. Uh, and then you're a bad guy. No, it's because you are a good guy and are quietly out there working while doing other big things in media that they're scared of you. It's because they know they don't control you, and you know what's going on. Yeah, I think it is very interesting to see these kind of uh, assassins come out of the woodwork. Um, this is probably the most well-received album I've had in about 20 years. Um, 
and I've been through a lot, you know, uh, in my own way. And, uh, you know, I've shot myself in the foot like any good artist would. But I, I've seen to kind of dialed it back in. Uh, the music business is coming up back around me. And it's amazing because all of a sudden then you're, uh, you know, you're, then you're at a target because, you know, you have power. You have a mass power again. Um, it's the kind of power that's very threatening to those systems. They do not want outliers. They love Muppets. They love people who toe the party line. Um you know, and, and, and I think it's, uh, I, you know, look, you know, your audience doesn't need an education on this. Uh, they're, they're more aware than any audience in the world uh, how these things work. So uh, we don't have to go on about it. But, I mean, I think it's very obvious that, uh, you know, here they come. You know, I, I, I can, you know, I, the agenda starts to poke out. Um, I just had an interview uh, about a week ago. A guy was asking me about Edward Snowden. <laughs> here's, here's, here's the line of questioning out of nowhere in the middle of an interview about my, my, my new album. Uh do you believe Edward Snowden was a hero? Yes. Why? Because he did the right thing. Next question. Uh, would you do the same? Okay. I told the guy to go, you know what, himself. I said, am I running for president? I mean, what kind of, what kind of line of questioning is that? I'm promoting an album. <laughs> Well, and the reason we raise it, I know my audience is very informed, it's that obviously you can speak here uncensored, they won't be able to filter it as much, and so you can speak directly to it, because this is what happens to myself, to Ron Paul, uh, to countless others that, that, that really try to shift the paradigm into really waking up to the larger control system, is they put articles out constantly. Alex Jones, you know, has no audience. Uh, Alex Jones wishes he wasn't discredited. Alex Jones is a racist with no proof, but we know they're doing it because they want to assassinate the messenger. But the good news is they've already assassinated their own credibility, so they're shooting blanks. And I don't think in their arrogance they figured that out yet, uh, Billy. No, I agree with you. But just to give you a little bit of kind of, of context on the other side of it, uh, right after the Anderson Cooper thing uh, kind of went viral, uh, I know you put a story on your uh, site, and I, I gave a quote for that. Um, and when that sort of kind of ticked back up into the mainstream uh, consciousness, I probably did about 10 interviews in the next couple of days. And in seven of the 10 interviews, I was asked about the Anderson Cooper flap. And five of the seven uh, people who interviewed me had no idea it was for a charity. So that shows you that there is still a little effect in this. Oh, I agree. Counting on that low information crowd to not, not go beyond headlines. That's it. They are targeting a low information crowd. But again, that crowd of zombies really don't even matter anymore. I mean, I'm sad to say that it's like they're almost not even people. They've decided to just mindlessly buy into this and this narcissistic, thin, mindless gruel uh, that's being spewed out. But speaking speaking of Anderson Cooper, and then we're going to get into your album that I do think is one of your best in a long time. Uh, speaking of Anderson Cooper, he really is a CIA guy. He really was in the CIA, not just an intern. He really is uh, the uh, you know grandson of one of the biggest dynasties in the country. What is it, the Astors? So he's a little rich kid, given everything he's got. He's failed. He has some of the worst ratings on CNN. So I would feel good, Billy, to just to have this... This this joke, this failure that was given everything. I mean, you came from nowhere. I came from nowhere. He was given everything. He's the opposite of Americana. You know, I think what's interesting, because um, to me, uh, you know, uh, I try to stay out of the personal side of it. Um, although I did say the other day I wasn't born with a silver spoon on my arse like, like he was. Um, I think it's very interesting that... Um, there is a level of arrogance here. They, uh, that crowd, whatever that crowd is, and I've hung with them. You know, I've been in those rooms, and so have you. I've been to those parties, and so have you. That crowd really th thinks they can sort of flick us off their shoulder anytime they want. And what they don't realize is that people like you and me, are, we're just symbols of a much greater conversation. They don't understand that a, a, a vast uh, part of our country is waking up, uh, is breaking this hypnosis, this grip of hypnosis, and they can't see it. They literally can't see it. They do not think they, they literally think they can just double down, triple down on these narratives and these false paradigms. And, and, and the public's just going to keep lapping them up. Uh, and I think, uh, as we see from recent events, people are starting to sort of question that the narratives and, and, and you see the media, those old world medias tr tr doubling, triple, quadrupling down on false uh, storylines because they literally don't have a B plan. 
I agree with you. And just the beginning of the questioning is the beginning of the end because as soon as you question, you're no longer only in that narrow, low information uh, media system. You now discover the wider world. You come out of Plato's cave and it's game over. That is such an incredibly exciting thing. Uh, you know, I think one of your songs in the last album or the album before was about the world on fire. Uh, and the lyrics really spoke to this. I remember we were talking like six years ago and you were saying, you know, you can clearly see crisis after crisis coming. I mean, which is now here, but that out of that, we really could see a new renaissance. I think um, I, I, I get the sense from talking to my friends and family, and I'm sure you know many of your listeners, uh, of course, which I'm one of, uh, those conversations that we had around the dinner table seven years ago, which were really difficult conversations to have, and people would just throw their hands up and say, you're crazy. Now people are listening. And just the fact that you're even able to sit at that table and have those conversations and be able to back it up with uh, statistics and uh, people, uh, you know, the failure of this uh, particular administration, um, the lying that goes on, and, and, and the fact that uh, there's this greater divide between the public that's awake and the public that's asleep. I mean, those that are asleep really do much, must want to be asleep because, I mean, how could you not be eyes open at this point? That's right. How could you not be eyes open at this point? And, and his mother was a Vanderbilt, the heir of the entire Vanderbilt fortune, not not a not a um, aster. But it doesn't matter; they're interrelated. And again, nothing wrong with being the last male heir of one of the biggest robber baron horrible dynasties. It's just give us a break, Anderson Cooper, because I don't even get into fighting with these personalities. But at the same time, I think it's important to not just respond and say, hey, I'm helping a cat charity. Leave me alone. Don't try to make me, you know, look like it has been when I'm not. Everybody knows that you've been popular all along and you've had big resurgences. Uh, I mean, it's just a joke. I mean, you've sold 40 million albums. Anderson Cooper is on a failed network that's converting to cooking shows. So I'm not being nasty. It's just they are dancing on their own graves when you are just having the courage to express what's already there. And as you said, we're like little tips of icebergs sticking up or little focal points, as Ron Paul always says. I mean, we're nothing. We, we are just like everybody else that is trying to find out what the hell is really going on. I can't disagree with you, and I think there's a democratization there um, in the way that we're all communicating. And, uh, you know, thank God for people like you for building these new systems by which we're uh, sharing information. And, uh, you know, we're building up our own networks of communication. I mean, I mean basically, uh, I would argue we're past the tipping point, and now it's just how is this all going to play out? And as you've been predicting for I don't know how many years, now we're seeing the rolling out of this, this next wave of control and propaganda. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that everyone's so prepared and has been sort of mentally prepared for what's coming. Um, I just want to point out one small thing, because I think it's important in the, in the context of the conversation we're having. You know, when, uh, when uh, President Obama was elected, uh, that night I went on stage and I, and, I, and I knew I was already listening to you. I was kind of like uh, half awake, let's put it. And I went on stage and I said, let's, hopefully, let's, hope, let's hope this is a sign that things are going to go in the right direction. And you actually ran a piece that we didn't know each other then. You did a piece kind of mocking me or being another celebrity sort of buying, drinking the Kool-Aid. And, um, and I was thinking back to that time. I wasn't offended by the, by the piece. I thought it was kind of funny. But um, I remember thinking back to the time where I was in my own kind of awakening. And, um, you know, we have to remember, those of us that are awake, there are so many people that are they're in that horrible moment of like, wow, if this stuff is true, what do I do? And uh, we see that more and more now. You see people waking up, and it's, it's really shocking to them that they've been given a lie sort of all along. And uh, as you sit in bars and, you know, around coffee houses and talk to people about what's really going on, you can see that it's, it's not so much that they don't know that something's happening. They just don't know what to do about it. So we have to continue to prepare the way. And, uh, it, and uh, you know, this is not some uh, begging appeal, you know, to be supported as an artist. But what I would say to everybody is, is the artists in many ways are some of the most dangerous people in the world because we have that, we have that street credibility to go out and sing some gospel. And, uh, and that's what makes me dangerous is once I get, once my career starts rolling in the right direction again, well, here I come because, well, how, how is it possible? I'm, I mean, they've tried to kill me how many times? Uh, and, you know, the Anderson Cooper is just a small example of getting kicked in the shin. Um, and so it really helps. And I'm not uh, begging for uh, my own self, but, but please support artists, to support free voices, to support people like Alex, to keep speaking out, to and, and, it, it, and it does require material support. Like, I'm a supporter of what you're doing with Info, uh, InfoWars Life, right? Is that what it's called? Absolutely. Um, you know, 
Billy, yeah, I want to shift I, gears and talk about this more deeply because, and I use this analogy too much. I apologize, this, but but it's so accurate. I use it. 20 years ago, you couldn't find organic food anywhere. It was very expensive if you could because there was no market. As people began to demand it, it grew the market. Prices went down. It's now displacing all the garbage. It's displacing the high fructose corn syrup. They're taking it out of Hershey's. We're taking it out of Heinz. Now, now, look, there's still some fake organic. There's still problems. The point is we demanded quality. The market changed. And exactly, if people go out and support independent artists that are speaking out against tyranny, that's great music as well, and buy your album at SmashingPumpkinsNexus.com and then play it for friends and then ask that it be played on the radio or share it with their friends, that's how you bring the system down. You've got to go further and decide you want to promote cultures of liberty. I can't tell you historically how many kings, how many corrupt dynasties were brought down by a jester telling jokes that became viral in ancient times or by the uh, local band or even one guy with his, uh, they didn't even have guitars back then, you know, one guy with his little mandolin or whatever singing songs about the corrupt nobility, that would change it. So, so a song or an idea that isn't in the hands of the system could bring them down, and that's why they target people like you. Hey, look, you know, there's, there was a reason the CIA uh, was, you know, spying on John Lennon, <laughs> you know, um, you know, at that point in time, he was probably the most dangerous artist in the world. Um, oh, and, they killed him, too. Well, you know, I can't speak to that, but I, I'll say this much. Um, if you look at the power that rock and roll had in the 70s, vis-a-vis -vis the power that rock and roll has now, I think there's been a concerted effort to to, uh, to drain that those systems of their power um, because it's just too radical. It's just too dangerous. And, and and there's you know when you when you have the power of a, of a John Lennon or a Bob Marley and they can literally have one song that will change the consciousness of the world and get people to look at something different and I would point and I and I'm saying this from a very specific point of, uh, point of view look at the lack of political music in the world right now and compare that to the 1960s it is unbelievable the lack of political and social discourse in music right now do you think that's an do you think that's an an accidental omission. They came in and they took it over on record. Billy Corgan of Smashing Pumpkins fame is our guest. SmashingPumpkinsNexus.com. We're going to send out a tweet uh, of the website right now. We're going to post this video later today on Facebook and Twitter. It needs to go viral because he has a lot of courage saying what he's saying because they really come after people. And i got to be very careful here what I'm going to say about John Lennon. But they made a film six, seven years ago that won a bunch of awards that had the declassified documents where Strom Thurmond, the senator, and others said, we want him taken out. We know the suspicious way he was killed. I, I'm, I'm just going to stop right there. But I, I, I've talked to the highest level people and been told stuff about what really went on and then what happened to them afterwards and everything. And I can tell you, the FBI and the CIA killed John Lennon. And then they went on a campaign to cover up what they did with their patsy. And so that's why when we talk about this, folks, it's very dangerous. I mean, so so we're not saying, hey, we're heroes here. We're just saying, realize this isn't just your regular, sh you know, shuck and jive on CNN. I mean, we're really laying it out here. I think um, I think what's kind of funny about the modern life is I don't think they have to kill you anymore. <laughs> I think they just digitally kill you. That's right. You know what I mean, if anything, you're almost you're almost better as a sort of sort of living effigy. Which is why I think some of these people come out of the woodwork to try to like split my throat. I mean, criticize me as an artist, that's fine. There's there's plenty to criticize. But if you look at a lot of the subtext of the of the things that are written about an artist like me, it has a lot of a lot of times it gets in a lot of sort of false narratives, uh, moral equivalencies that have nothing to do with uh, music or art or love or people's lives. You just said it. You just said it. They create straw men that aren't Alex Jones or Billy Corgan, and then they attribute things we didn't say. They have uh, they have these campaigns. They send out fake emails that aren't from me, insulting people. They call people up and say it's me and insult them, famous people. Uh, they uh, spoof faxes, and, and I know it's the government and corporations, so believe me, what Billy's talking about, it goes on here all the time in, in, in an attempt to, to derail us, but it's not going to work because Billy Corgan and Alex Jones are just little bitty expressions like like a compound eye of a dragonfly. We're just one little tiny part of it. You can't chop off all the heads. Totally agree with you. And, and one thing I would add to that, because I know sometimes when I talk like this to people, they think, well, 
are you saying that everyone who works at the local paper is dead? No, it's these systems are put in place, and then they go out and they find uh, people who are not free thinkers to basically implement the program. Um, they regurgitate you know, the national story. They're already the little sycophantic type that'll go with whatever the mindless pop culture narrative is. Absolutely. And, I, and I've even had uh, off-record conversations like I know you have where people have admitted to me where they've had stories squashed. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, somebody makes a juice call and makes sure a story is squashed or a particular agenda is promoted. So when you're looking at, uh, you know, your local media and you see and you and you go, well, this smells like propaganda. Know that more than likely that person is not conscious. They are in a they put in, been put in that position because they, they're a proven bootlicker. Almost yeah. all local news is written in New York or L.A. or D.C. This is on record and packaged and sent. You tell them the local story and then they send down what you say or it's read off a teleprompter if it's a national story. Right. So so if there's a if, you know, if there's a man in a high castle somewhere, uh, you know, there's not a lot of them. But they're they're able to through their um, their control and their and their media control sort of manipulate the storyline. We look, your listeners know, uh, you know, and I'm a listener. Uh, you know, we know it, it, these things are. I mean, we sit back. Look, when 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 Ferguson started to boil over, and you you know you had uh, Jakari and uh, Biggs. Joe Biggs down there. You know, I was watching some of the coverage, and it's really interesting. You know, because and it's so important that you do that because you're giving us. Uh, the real on the street perspective as opposed to the propaganda perspective. Billy Corgan, our own mind. stay there. Come back and finish up with that thought. Let's talk about the record straight ahead. A new album available right now at the Smashing Pumpkins Nexus.com website. We're going to send a tweet out to that website right now. I want to see everybody go there and buy the album. Because believe me, they have targeted uh, Billy and his organization because of him speaking out on a whole bunch of issues. They don't like what they call loose cannons. They want people that will submit and go along with their whole agenda. Billy, I want to thank you for the gift of my uh, Bohemian Grove security shirt and real badge. I mean, real uh, real uh, shoulder patch. Uh, when I wear that out, people say, who in the world do you work for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. I found that in uh, somewhere outside of San Francisco, and it was like, it was like sitting on a shelf, and I thought, oh, my God, i got to get this for Alex. <laughs> that is awesome. Billy, uh, I, I want to get back into what you said about Ferguson and more on the album before you have to leave us in that airport you're sitting in right now. Uh, but Tommy Lee, uh, I had heard from folks that he was awake. Uh, I had heard from somebody that worked with him on a TV show behind the scenes that he was all aware of the New World Order. I, don't, I know you don't want to speak for him personally, but uh, can you repeat what you told me during the break? No, Tommy's, you know, Tommy's eyes are wide open, you know, and, and you, you talked a lot of artists off record and, you know, you and I have talked about that. I mean, I think the, the general public would be shocked how much of the entertainment world um, is awake and it's because they're behind the wizard's curtain. Joe and Perry's know, fully awake. Joe Perry's fully awake. I think I need to call him today, but uh, a lot of folks are. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I think the, the difficulty is these paradigms have been set up where it's like, you know, you have to stare down the barrel of a particular gun. In this case, your career. Um, like I said, I mean, what's the new what's the new paradigm? You're going to get digitally assassinated. You know what I mean? Um, I know there would be some people, particularly in the rock and roll world, that will roll their eyes at these kind of assertions. But there's a reason that that the that the great artists uh, get marginalized. They, they get sucked into things that have nothing to do with their music and. You know, they're, uh, I, I'm literally everything I say now is trolled for quotes, you know, and, and I'm not saying it's all political. Some of it's just dumb stuff. But the, but the fact of the matter is, is, is this whole uh, business has risen up around uh, entertainment. It's big business, but it ultimately is about the disenfranchising of the artist's vote in the culture. In essence, the, the constant message is artists' voices don't matter. Um, well, exactly. Like the, when you look at like what a Jimi Hendrix represented as opposed to your normal average politician, Okay, you tell me who's the more honorable person. Well, it's obviously Jimi Hendrix following his soul, his heart, trailblazing, uh, creating a heavy rock, heavy metal, um, and a true pioneer. Right, and so that's what I'm trying to say is, is uh, from cradle to grave, you know, there are systems in place. You know, you pick them. Uh, you know, now it's Common Core, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, the, 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 the scholarship programs, all this. They're meant to take anybody who's... Uh, too bright, too smart, and make sure they're corralled into a system from the get-go. And uh, God forbid you exist outside that system and, and, and prosper, uh, as you and I have, and, and bless the Lord for the, for the gifts he's given us. And I think both of us, and I know we've talked about this, we feel a great responsibility to turn those gifts around 
to serve others. And, and uh, if it kills us, it kills us. But at the end of the day, uh, we've got to trust the, you know, the man upstairs. Uh, that, you know, there's a greater purpose here uh, at play. And, um, and, and if, if, what, if, what, what you, if what we watched on the old, uh, you know, the old systems, the old uh, the mainstream media system, if, that, if that's truth, I don't want to live in that world anyway. That's beautifully said. I don't want to live in that world anyway because it is a fraud. It is a lie. I feel so empowered. Not that I have all the answers. I make a lot of mistakes. I say stupid stuff sometimes. I mean, I hear my show rebroadcast and go, oh, my God, that sounds horrible. I don't mean that. <laughs> but, but at the same time, my heart's true. I'm trying to tell the truth. And, and more of what I say turns out to be accurate than what dinosaur media says. And it resonates with people. And then I just don't want to let them down. It's humbling to know there are so many good people that are awake now and, and looking for me for leadership or whoever. I don't think that's where the leadership is. It's in our hearts. It's in our souls. It's in following our gut. It's in doing the right thing, and it's in doing the opposite of what mainstream dinosaur media says. I, I want to ask you about this. Where do you and your gut, Billy, as you say the world's on fire in a previous album, where do you and your gut think civilization's really going? Are we going to survive? Will we make it to the next renaissance and beyond? Uh, and, and what do you think that fight's going to look like? You know, I, I, um, I hold my breath on that one. Uh, you know, there's a big fight coming. Uh, you know, it's one thing to listen to you talk about FEMA documents and, uh, you know, uh, executive orders that we don't know about. And uh, yesterday, I think you had on your site about the, this idea that it's now legal to spy on everyone everywhere for the end of time and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, these systems are going to double and triple down um, because because they have no uh, alternate <laughs> plan. You understand? Uh, they've been in power for a very long time, and uh, whoever's pulling those levers uh, is is not. They're not. Uh, they're not. They're, you know, look. When a baseball team loses, they go, "Oh, we'll come back next year and we'll rebuild." No, these guys are in it to win. Um, and uh, and you know, sometimes when I'm sitting around a table and uh, and your name comes up or I say some things that I've learned through you and through other people, um, they get into like kind of games about accuracy. Like, well, how can you know that that's true? And all I got to say again and again is like, look, come on, something, something's off here. Something's wrong. And, and people like you, people like me, we don't have to be accurate. <laughs> That's not our job. Our job is not to be perfect. We don't hold ourselves to be, up to be perfect. We don't hold ourselves up to be, uh, you know, uh, keepers or tooth tellers or something like that. We're just pointing, at, as you often say, you know, you're just pointing and saying, uh, do you see that big thing that's coming down the road? I do. Exactly. And they say, well, what exactly is it? How do we know your eyes are authorized to say that's a juggernaut with fire shooting out of it, out of Road Warrior? And I'm like, uh, well, I came by another village. They said something that looked like that blew it up. Uh, so that thing looks scary. What are we going to do about it? And, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and again, I, I would I would recommend anybody the same thing. We don't we and I'm sorry, the, you know, the collective world that's awake. You know, let's extend it even beyond your audience. Uh, we don't have to be right. We don't have to be accurate. We know what wrong is. We know what wrong is, and we know a lot of what's going on is wrong. You know? Well, um, sure, they have this you know, fake moral authority where, where accuracy in media or where uh, media matters, remember the White House, or where uh, you know, they have that truth detector site or Snopes. You know, run by uh, you know a couple in an apartment. They sit on the mountain and they say what reality is. And I mean, anybody that starts telling you they have a corner on reality, well, that's who you really got to watch. Hey, if if we reach a point as a, as a as a race where we do not grieve the loss of every child, I don't care what color, I don't care where they're from. You know what I mean? If we don't grieve the loss of every child, that's 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 an indictment of us. You know, and we've got to be protesting for every child, every situation. Uh, you know, we need to have moral outrage where, where there's injustice everywhere. Um, and then when we see agendas at play, we have to step back and say, why is this more important than everything else? Um, we have to grieve for all of these things. We have to grieve for the GMOs. We have to grieve for the chemtrails. We have to grieve for all this crap that we have to face down. Um, and we have to pull together. And that's what I mean. We don't have to be right. We don't have to be right. We just have to know. As long as we know, that's the power. Um, and and uh, I, I'm blessed to to be one voice in in the wilderness, at least uh, a free thinker. Um, there are times where it's very difficult in a musical life to struggle, where you know the numbers don't add up and you don't get the advantage that you think you should get, and all these things. And and it, and those are those hard days where you got to stare in the mirror and say, Would I rather be on my knees, subjugated to some system that would ask me to be a, a, a robot, muppet, something? Or would I rather be a free thinker?
And that's what I would say. I'm proud to be a free thinker. And if that means what it means, uh, uh, you know, a half full hall somewhere, that's what it means. Because I'm, I, I can't go down any other way. Well, you know my favorite quote by Mark Twain, and he had a lot of great ones. In the beginning, a patriot is a scarce man, hated, feared, and scorned. But in time, when his cause succeeds, the timid join him. Then it costs nothing to be a patriot. I was on over 100 radio stations. It was just unheard of when I was, like, you know, 26, 27 years old, uh, and 9-11 happened. And it was just unheard of. And I was on 100 stations, small mom and pop, some of them, but high ratings, and I was growing and then the towers got blown up, and I said, no, the government's clearly involved. And those stations all called, most of them. They said, we're going to turn you off next week, or we're going to turn you off next month when the contract's up, using monthly contracts, if you don't stop it right now. And you know what? I didn't feel bad at all when Ted Anderson came in and he said, all these stations are turning you off. You just lost 10 today. Uh, they're warning you. you got to stop now. And I said, Ted, I just can't stop. And it's the truth. And he said, I really respect that, uh, Alex. He goes, fine. You, you know, you have a place here on the network. Uh, you know, we're going to lose at the network at that time millions of dollars uh, over the you know years. And back then I was making hardly any money. And, and, I, and he said, you know, you would get you know, that. But he goes, I respect that. And, and he goes, so I'll lose millions. You're going to lose millions. Because I just hit the zeitgeist. I had just gone from like 20 stations to over 100. It was boom spreading all over the country because it was hardcore libertarian. The right wingers liked it. But I came out and spoke b bad about their God, George Bush. And, it, and and I didn't even say he did it all. I just said, look, sh the government's running Al Qaeda. They let them attack us bare minimum. And, and I'm proud of that. And, and it's just like I'm proud of what you've done. But then I only got bigger down the road. But then it only gets scarier because then it's not even about being on the air or being famous. It is all about the struggle for reality and trying to find that truth. And I think that's what you're saying. It's not that we're perfect or always right. We want the truth and we have goodwill towards others. I think we're talking about the philosophy, the philosophy of those of us that want to be free. Well, I think it goes back to your question of what what do I think is going to happen, and this is this is where it gets into a very tricky juncture. Um, we have to see what's happening, but at the same time, we have to be able to kind of step back and look at the, the larger narrative at play. Uh, if there are nefarious forces in the world, they are they are willing to use our humanity against us. They are basically sociopathic. They don't care um, that babies die somewhere in the middle of some desert. Uh, they don't care. Um, you know, that uh, kids are taking vaccines with horrible things in them. Um, they don't care about the rise in autism rate. They're, they're willing to do whatever, however. I mean, they've proven that <laughs> again and again and again. So this is where we cannot get sucked into these false moral arguments. Those arguments are important. You know, like in talking uh, recently about some of the things that have gone on, uh, the protests that are happening post uh, uh, is it Mr. Garner was the man's name? Yes. It was choked. Terrible. Uh, and, and then the horrible situation. And then what obviously what happened in Ferguson. And, you know, you get in these discussions, like I said, around the dinner table and people think that you're uh, unsentimental or unfeeling. And no, it's no, these are horrible. Of course, there's injustice uh, in the inner cities. Of course. Uh, you know, does that mean every cop's the bad guy? You say it all the time. I know lots of great cops. I know lots of great cops for family people that would never do these things. Does that mean every cop's good or bad? No. We have to judge every person on their moral character. Uh, I'm you know, somewhat friendly with the police chief of the Chicago Police Department, Gary McCarthy. Incredible man. Incredible man. I watch where he grieves uh, over every situation uh, uh, because he's a, he's a man. He's a father. He cares. Does that does it mean just because he puts on the uniform does he mean he's a bad guy? I mean, what about our soldiers? Are all our soldiers bad? Absolutely not. This narrative that's spun out all of a sudden, all of a sudden we got to be afraid of the soldiers. I'll take a soldier over anybody any day. Exactly. Any day. They've tried to dumb it down to the opposite of what Martin Luther King said: judge people on their deeds and what they stand for. What you just said. And then if you don't support all the rioting or whatever, you support the First Amendment but not rioting, then you're bad. If you don't say right. kill the cops randomly, well, I don't want to be killed randomly. I don't want to be – I don't want to see the blacks killed just because they're black or whites killed. I mean it just comes down to civilization and basic common sense. Now, Billy, let's talk about your album. Uh, we just downloaded it uh, the other day from your site, SmashingPumpkinsNexus.com. I can't wait to listen to the whole thing. I, and I'm not just saying this. I love all your albums. And I really love your old stuff. This has a lot of the old sound, but even better lyrics. I think this is almost like classic Smashing Pumpkins 2.0. Everybody should go there. How do people get the record? 
Uh, you know, it's on all the typical uh, <laughs> Illuminati systems. <laughs> um, it's easy to find. That's not the issue. Uh, but thank you so much for that. Well, I sure. I mean, it's that. in the stores. It's on CD. It, it's downloaded at iTunes. Folks can go find those links at smashingpumpkinsnexus.com. How do people support you? I guess they come to the big shows. Uh, they spread the word. I mean, uh, how do they do that? You know, um, that's a difficult one because uh, there is um, – there is the commerce, which uh, is important, but honestly, it's more of the street cachet. Um, uh, and that's what I'm saying is, uh, if not me, please find artists that you support, uh, retweet them, share them with your friends. The artists are the bulwark. Uh, there's a reason most totalitarian regimes kill the artists second. Of course. <laughs> They kill the weakest first, and then they go after the strongest, which are the artists, because they, they are the X factor. They are the voice in the wilderness that can point out the obvious, like, hey, look at that over there. You know, and they can do it in a very clever way. You know, if Jesus spoke in parables, so can we. Um, and, and it's very powerful. Music, as you know, penetrates, like, you know, typical stuff, which is why I'm able to go to countries where people don't even speak English and play music and communicate. It's music of the heart. Sure. Um, and, and I'm blessed to, you know, 25 plus years here and going still strong, Billy Corgan. stronger than ever. Billy Corgan's our guest, smashingpumpkinsnexus.com. Retweet that, put it on Facebook, folks. The establishment's scared of him. And anybody the system's scared of, you better know we need to get behind because they promote terrorist groups. They fund Al Qaeda. They, they fund all these radical groups. They get caught funding the Klan. They get caught funding radical racist black groups. They want us all killing each other, just like uh, one of the singers uh, that you know he just mentioned from Jamaica said uh, they want to see us go on killing killing one another, top ranking. And that's, of course, Bob Marley. We're almost out of time. I'm going to let you go so you can get that plane or get on down the road, Billy. I hope you'll come down to Austin soon and come in studio. Maybe I'll come up and see you in Chicago. Uh, but I really know your interviews here resonate with everybody. Uh, again, uh, one more time, the new album. Tell us what the name of the album means, Monuments to an Elegy. What's that mean? Oh, I don't know, Alex. <laughs> These things come out of my brain sideways. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Well, it sounds cool. I'm just wondering if there was some inside baseball to that. Uh, you know, I, to me, it's a bit of a kind of a, a wave goodbye to what people thought the band was. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm just trying to move on into the future. And, uh, you know, thankfully, with people like you, new media like you, creating these new systems, I'm able to uh, speak freely and speak to an audience and, and just, look, you know, try, try to find like-minded souls. We have to build these new systems. You are. Uh and, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to do the same. You know, we have to build basically systems that are stronger than these systems of propaganda and control. And we will. We will, we will survive and we will succeed. Well, it's happening. And, you know, as you said, we need to support artists, whether it was in Nazi Germany or whether it was in, in, in any other totalitarian regime, Pol Pot, Khmer Rouge, they would kill 95% of the artists, even ones that served them. They didn't like having them around. They were scared of them because that beauty, that touching people through music, through art, through images, that communication of archetypes that, that artists have innately, don't even know what you're doing. You just do it and it reaches people. They are scared of that. And that's what the tyrants are, is little men behind the curtain who want to run the whole show and, and, and really... I guess don't feel loved or liked. They feel rejected, so they want to dominate. Billy, I'll say bye to you during the break. 20-second final comment. Just God bless everyone. Just keep fighting. Keep the faith. I got to say, the new album is amazing. It sounds like old stuff you've done, but stuff I've never heard before. I mean, as you said, you've gone to the next uh, level with the new album and a monument to Elegy available. At SmashingPumpkinsNexus.com. I'm going to stop it right there. I get in a goofy mood sometimes. I was telling Buckley earlier, I had one cup of coffee this morning, but I worked out for like an hour and a half doing deadlifts and heavy weight. And I remember why in high school I started doing that. I got addicted to lifting weights and got like really naturally buff. You get high off of full body heavy weight. So I was doing some clings and some other stuff with my trainer, Patty Cake, who I know is listening. He went deer hunting today with his buddies. He said, I'm going to be listening on the app, driving out of the ranch, and I expect to be plugged. He actually didn't say that. He goes, I'll be listening. Wonder if I get a plug. And anyway, it's not a plug. All right, I'm kind of babbling here at the end of the show, mindlessly. There's all this serious news, serious issues to cover. I will be uh, back this Sunday, Lord willing, live, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I want to thank David Knight for doing a great job uh, yesterday with the transmission. 
Uh, again, we've had family illnesses, family stuff the last year. When it rains, it pours. And uh, I, if I miss any days next week, I'm not on vacation. I, I, I'm, I'm going to take off a few days around Christmas. Uh, but we'll probably, I'll probably be here next week. Uh, we're we're going to see into that. But uh, it's a lot of stuff going on. Pray for us. Best of times, worst of times. We pray for you uh, as well. Uh, briefly, I want to just tell you, we have the biggest sale ever on Xtube. You can get it uh, $5 off and free shipping. So uh, that's 17% off the regular price and free shipping on our most popular supplement, the super nascent deep earth crystal source iodine. And if you take it, I mean, you've heard the rave reviews. It, it really is a big deficiency in most people. And most folks can't absorb the other types of iodine that are bound to things from the research we've looked at. So that's InfoWarsLife.com. And it helps fund this operation that the system wants to shut down. is fighting greedily, tooth and nail to do so, and failing by the grace of God. No weapon formed against it shall prosper. Uh, if it is in the big uh, universal uh, you know, combine that that not happen. And expanding on that, we also have Oxy Powder right now in supply, discounted uh, for the New Year's resolution to flush out your guts. Rob Dew lost 12 pounds. I was saying 18 pounds. That was somebody else in the office. 12 pounds uh, in one week taking it of just detritus that was in him. And it's good to boost your immune system, obviously, to have healthy upper and lower intestines. Of course, you could just have the CIA by to uh, rectally feed you in the new uh, torture report. But uh, this is kind of the opposite of that. Uh, this is uh, flush your guts out without the help of a CIA pervert team. Uh, so I hate to have to get into this, but you know, this is something that's really healthy and good for your body and, and is the most dramatic, obvious product we have at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 888-253-3139. And again, I want to thank you all as Christmas approaches and, and, and the holidays for everybody else for all your support and putting up with me. Because we do have some magic moments here on air with our guests, our researchers. Myself, sometimes I'm quite poignant and bring up some really salient points. The rest of the time, it sounds like a, a gibbering redneck uh, turned up like a chipmunk or something. Uh, but that's what it comes down to. So we really appreciate you and love you. And it's very, very humbling. All right, that's it for this transmission. Nightly news tonight, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Thanks to Billy Corgan of... The uh, Smashing Pumpkins and more for joining us. See you this Sunday, 4 to 6.